uh, going on now at Severe Heights Church. We're waiting for these services to start, but oh my goodness, uh, what a, a, a beautiful scene, a tribute there with the blue lights on stage, on the, uh, as the service is about to begin, we see the governor. Uh, the opening prayer will begin soon by Brad Bryant. Um, Pastor James Willis will be, is there as well. And friends of the deputy. Billy Radford and Greg Willis will be hearing from them as they talk about the loss, this enormous loss of their friend. And of course, we're going to try to do our best to just let you um, just really take in the service as it is. Um, but just keep in mind as they start again, it will be that opening prayer by Brad Bryant, as Lori said, and then the national anthem. Now you're looking outside, right outside of the church. Uh, keep in mind when something like this happens, it's not just the uh, Blunt County, it's not just the Blunt County Sheriff's Office that will be there, but several from all around the area. So let's go ahead and take you inside. It looks like they're starting to begin. You may be seated. Good afternoon. I'm Jeff French, the Chief Deputy with the Blount County Sheriff's Office. On behalf of Greg's family and the Blount County Sheriff's Office, I'd like to welcome you and thank you for being here. We're here today to honor Deputy McCowan's duty and sacrifice and to celebrate a life well lived. At this time, I would like to ask you to stand again and would like to invite Blount County Sheriff's Office Chaplain Brad Bryant to come and lead us in an opening prayer. And after the prayer, I would ask that you remain standing for the national anthem to be performed by Deputy Shelby Eggers. Please stand. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're gathered here today to celebrate the life and service of Deputy Greg McCowan. While we thank you for our time with him, we can't help but be frustrated with our questions being unanswered and our hearts staying so broken. Even after yesterday's events, there was some solace in knowing that Greg's killer had been caught, but our hearts are still broken. Maybe you're just trying to teach us that healing will never come from getting even or paying back but the true healing only comes from you. So we are coming to you now asking for peace and comfort and, yes, healing. I ask that you be with this precious family by blood and by blue who have been attacked by evil. I ask that you surround them with your love and mercy. I ask that you calm the minds and hearts of those who continue to ask the what-if questions and toss and turn, unable to sleep at night. Speak peace into their spirits. While this reminds us that there is evil in the world, we also know that the brave men and women of the thin blue line that are physically behind Greg's family here stand ready to fight that evil. Give them strength. Give them courage. Give them victory. We commit everything that takes place today in the sanctuary to you. May we honor you, Father. 
as well as Greg, a true man, a father, a grandfather, a deputy, and a friend. May he rest in peace as his blue family takes it from here. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Oh, say can you see At this time, it's my honor to introduce our governor of the great state of Tennessee, Bill Lee. It's with great honor that I have the opportunity to stand before you to bring honor to the life of Greg McCowan. Um, <clears throat> Maria, my wife, is with me here today. It should be noted as well that Lieutenant Governor McNally is here, Speaker Sexton is here, members of the General Assembly are here because this moment and this service is one where leaders all across this state will pause and reflect to honor a hero. The men and women that serve every single day to uh, protect and defend and to make certain that the rest of us in this state um, can live peaceably I'm grateful for every single one of you, and I'm grateful that you're here today to honor a man who served alongside you and who is a hero to all of Tennessee. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to welcome you and thank you. I want to speak especially to the family. Greg McCowan is a hero. He is one of those who have chosen to put their life in harm's way to serve the people of this state. And you are the ones who suffer the most today because of that decision. We are the beneficiaries of the heroism of your father and of your loved one and of your son. He is a hero and a law enforcement official and a leader to all of us in Tennessee, but to you, he's a dad. 
He is a son. He is a loved one. And for you, this goes way beyond just being a hero. My prayer for you is that the Lord's nearness be a sweet thread in the bitter fabric of these days that you that are your lives right now. My other prayer is that this that you I hope that you will have a moment to take in the magnitude of the honor that is being bestowed upon this man who served all of us. It is our hope that this in some small way, this honor in some small way will be a part of the healing process for you so that you will one day realize just what he means to all of us, not just to you. Thank you for the incredible honor that I have to honor him today. I've got a son who loves his daddy And he's well aware I wear a badge He loves my work clothes, my patrol car The blue lights that he asks if he can have One day I was called to talk to my little boy third grade teacher I walked in and said what's he done today with a tear in her eye she handed me his journal said he wrote this morning's entry at the bottom of the page he wrote I'm scared I'm worried why does my daddy have to wear a gun to work? Will someone hurt him, take him away from me? Do me this favor, God, and I won't say a word. Not just my daddy, I'm not selfish. But please take care of every badge out there. As he got older, he was drawn to that shiny badge like a moth is to a flame. codes and scanners staying up late listening for my number or my name till one night on the radio he heard his daddy screaming we need help and back up right away and in a panic that young man fell down on his knees and he prayed dear god i'm scared i'm worried why does my daddy have to wear a gun to work will someone hurt him take him away from me do me this favor say a word not just my father I'm not selfish but please take care of every badge out there son 
who knows his daddy loves him and it's no surprise to anyone he was sworn in on monday they gave him his own badge and his gun Does my little boy have to wear a gun to work? Will someone hurt him? Take him away from me. Do me this favor, God, and I won't say a word. Not just my little boy. I'm not selfish. But please take care of every badge out there. No, not just one, but everyone who wears a badge out there. Next, I'd like to introduce uh, a friend of Greg's, Billy Radford. I want to start by saying how honored I am to be here before y'all speaking today. Y'all know him as little, y'all know him as Greg McCallum to his real close friends and family. They know him as little G. That's what we always called them. And though he may not be blood, but he was my brother and family. We showed it by the love that we shared with each other. To see his kids grow up to be the young lady and the young man that they are today. He's one of the first ones that's to hold my wife and my kids at the hospital after they was born. We met almost 20 years ago at work. We all worked at a boat company. Became friends there and then realized we had a lot in common. Started hanging out, you know, doing things together. Started uh, going out, like to do boating and just ride around and through the mountains and everything. Then we started going to church together not long after that. I know Greg was really uh, ready to meet Jesus because when he got saved, we was there. Got to been a lot of good time, good memories with him at church and outside of church as well. (sighs) 
You know, he spoke often of wanting to be a police officer for years as we worked at, at Mastercraft. When he finally started on that journey, we all knew that he would be a, one of the best officers possible. He loved people, always had a smile on his smile or a joke or a funny story to tell. Never met a stranger. And you knew that wherever you went <clears throat> with him that you would find someone to talk to. He loved his friends like family. And like I said, we are family. We love Kayleen, Caden, more than life itself. And baby Ella was a blessing on top of that. <sighs> Leah filled his heart and he was the uh, happiest in his life that had been in a while. When he spoke of Leah, you could tell that we shoot that she was who he belonged with. Today is her chance to say thank you for the way you brighten our lives. Even though God granted you but half, half a life, we will all feel cheated that you were taken from us and we must learn to be grateful that you came along at all. Now that you are gone, we truly appreciate what you did. We have all despaired at her loss over the past few days, and only the strength of your friendship has helped us to move forward to today. Now we know all Greg was a very special person. But he also had his only his own style outside of the uniform. We called it the little G starter kit. If he wasn't at work, if it was summertime, needed a pair of slides, cargo shorts, and a muscle shirt. You were set to go. Oh yeah, and a white ball cap. Some of his favorite things. He's got a few more, a couple funny things to tell. You know, most of y'all officers seen him with a shaved head. Before that he had hair, well, a little bit of hair. He tried to keep it growing long, you know, to hide it. So me and my wife, we was on the way home from work one day. We passed him down 411 and I asked my wife, I said, he's in a Jeep and top was off and everything. I said, did you see that? And she said, no, what is it? So I slowed down, he caught back up with me. And what Harry had grown, it was sticking up like this. <laughs> so whenever he, we slowed down, and he, I looked at him, he knew what we was looking at, he gave me that mean look, went and held his hair down so I wouldn't laugh at him anymore. He had a, we go over to their house for cookouts and birthday parties and everything. He got to talking about one of these yard darts the old style with a metal tip on it and everything, they outlawed him. He wanted a set. Well, he found a set on somewhere and he got him. So it was, so we played yard darts for a long time. Where we go over, we'd get to play yard darts with him. Or 
whatever we can do. Just sit around bonfires and just talk. One more story here that you got. Some of y'all that live around here, we go to Cage Cove. There's a little road, a gravel road across the Parson Branch. We'd go up there and he'd be in his Jeep. We'd have to, we'd have to make sure we stay behind because he liked to get a little wild. There's one area up there that turns back and it's real wide. He'd go up there and do donuts. So you knew whenever we got close to it, you'd have to slow down. He's slaying gravels all over us. And the kids, they was little. They was big back there just laughing. Want to do more. I'd like to say he's truly a friend. He's going to be missed. I'd like to finish by reading John 15, 13. The greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And that's what he did for us. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite Greg Willis to the podium. He was also a, a dear friend of Greg's. This is a day I never thought would come. For some reason, I always thought I'd go first. I, like Billy, met little Greg at Mastercraft, building boats. We always had a lot of fun, that little Greg. He's real jumpy. We gouge him every chance that we got. So it wasn't surprising if he got a, a lip saw throat at you, a cut out. Sometimes he, he'd even flip your tools over in the floor just because you messed with him. It grew quickly, the friendship that he and I had. They called him Little G, they called me Big G. I don't know why, ain't neither one of us above, of, above five eight. <laughs> I might have been just a little heavier than he was. We grew together quickly. Our children playing in diapers underneath church pews. Going playing in a mud hole if we could find one. He liked riding up Old Wallen Highway. He called us go snake hunting. And what that meant was whoever run over the most snakes won. <laughs> but what it really ended up in is us finding a mud hole somewhere. I got to talking to Greg one day down at Mastercraft. I pleaded with him to come with me, go to church with me. If you knew Greg before he knew the Lord, he was a rough character. He don't tell him what he'd tell you or what he'd do whenever you offended him. He said he'd come. I got to be lucky enough to be on the altar beside him whenever he got saved. Babies. Ask the Lord to save them. But you see, Greg, it goes a lot deeper with Greg. I'd be deployed. And he was one of the men that come to my house and took care of my two children took care of my wife, watched after my home. 
I couldn't be there. He was one of the men that stepped in the gap for me. Whenever I needed somebody the most, I could call on him. And he'd always say, big homie, what do you need? What's going on? I'll be right there. Little does he know he's still right there because it'll never leave me. It went far deeper than a, than a brotherhood. It went far deeper than a friendship. But I know without a shadow of a doubt one day that I'm going to see my friend again because of what he did a long time ago. And what he and I shared that can never be broken. That can never depart. Because it comes from someone greater than me. Someone greater than him. And that's why we shared the love for each other that we had. Vacations. Church services. Revivals. Just sitting on my porch. And just talk. Out in the garage. Working on things. And him always accusing me of, I don't know why you're doing that. You're just going to change it anyway. <laughs> he was my wiring technician because I'm horrible at wiring. A lot of precious memories we shared. I'm going to miss him. But I don't find it shocking that he done what he done for his fellow officer. Because the truth of it is, he'd do it for anybody in this room. If you were in harm's way, he would stand in harm's way for you. Even before he'd come a police officer. That was just Greg. He loved to laugh. He loved to have fun. But he loved to serve and protect. So whenever I got the call and I found out about him, I wasn't shocked to find out what had happened. But in fact, I can't think of another way that he would have wanted to go out. He went out doing what he loved. That was his dream to be a police officer. What more could you ask for to go out doing what you love? And I'm thankful. I know our, our hearts ain't the only one that's heavy. I know a lot of you that served with him. And if you've known Greg, I'm sure there's a special place in your heart for him. He was just that kind of guy. It'll get easier. I don't know. Because I can't rely on me. There's a hole in my heart that I truly feel will never be filled. And I lost a friend beyond all friends. But one day, one day, I'll see my friend again. Thank you. was a carpenter 50 years He pounded out blood, sweat and tears One day he hung his hammer up He wanted to do the things he loved What once was Sunday fishing Now was seven days a week told his wife to find me I'll be down at the creek Cause I don't want to drive another nail I've 
worked hard to do my job and I did it well. I've got the scars on these two hands that show I haven't failed. But I don't want to drive another nail. Now she was a woman full of faith and old Sam was full of pride. And she knew that he had one more job to do before he died. The Easter Sunday rolled around. A country church for the lost and found. Oh, Sam was there against his will as a preacher spoke on Calvary's hill of how they took the master and they nailed him to a tree. And you could hear old Sam crying as he fell down on his. I don't want to drive another nail I want to live my life for you I want to do it well You've got the scars on your two hands That show where I have failed Lord, I don't want to drive another nail I don't want to drive another nail For you, I want to do it well. You've got the scars on your two hands that show where I have failed. Lord, I don't want to drive another nail. Next, I would like to introduce uh, Blount County Chaplain Roger Murphy. Join me for prayer for just a second. Lord, take a look at us. Man, we're hurt and confused. We don't know what to say. And we don't know what to do with ourselves. I just ask you to come join us here. Help us as we move through this. We're just, we're just a, we're just a empty pot needing to be filled up by you. I thank you, Lord, for your presence. And I pray that the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for that. Isaiah six. Verse 8 says this, And then I heard the voice of the Master say, Who shall I send? Who will go for us? And I guess Greg said, I'll go. Send me. And he signed up. First time I ever laid eyes on him, I was down at the training academy early on, and I played a little game. Which one of these is not like the other's? <laughs> Because he stuck out like a sore thumb against the 12 year olds. <laughs> and I thought, I bet, I bet there's a story there. <laughs> I bet there's a story about, about him coming to law enforcement at this time in his life. But, but golly, he signed up and there he went. I talked to the training academy, and they said that Greg had a strategy. Y'all know him better than I do, but he had a strategy going in. Fly as far under the radar as he could possibly fly. Make sense? They said he tried so hard to fly under the radar, he stood out. <laughs> and so his strategy kind of failed. It's kind of, it's kind of a, 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 a amazing. The second thing I ever noticed about Greg was that smile, or whatever you call it. 
I, I'm not joking. When I looked at him and saw that smile, he looked just like a kid who had just popped a piece of candy in his mouth he wasn't supposed to have. You know what I'm talking about, right? Or maybe he knew a little something that nobody else knew. He just had that look. But it was infectious, and it somehow made him very uh, uh, approachable. Does that, that make sense? There's just something about that. Uh, as, uh, by the way, he did know something that other people, a lot of people don't know. We just heard about some of that. On the job, he was incredibly respected. And as, as these days have gone by, I just started writing down some things that people started saying about Greg. And here's the words that they used to describe him. I'm talking about over at the sheriff's office. Nice. Kind, solid, steady, respected, loyal, fun, professional. He lived with joy. He lived with integrity. You know he won a life-saving award, right? It's a big deal. He put his life on the line for somebody. He was a hostage negotiator, added extra training and and some don't know, I guess, that he recently gone through the interview process to become a crime scene investigator. He's going to get that job, too. Had goals. What a good cop. What a good man. And what a good friend. I'm going to, I'm going to say something. I hope I can speak for the family for a second. They have been overwhelmed by the love from this blue family. And for the family, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. You have no idea how this has sustained them. Thank you, blue family. Thank you, thank you, thank you for, wrap, for wrapping them up in your arms and taking care of them. They'll never, they'll never forget you for it. It's a big family, isn't it? And Mammy, we're, we're, we're all coming at Christmas. Let me say something to the family, just to you guys. Everybody else can listen for a second. I already told you this, but they need to hear it. When a, when a man loses his wife, he's a widower. And when a wife loses her husband, the word for it is widow. And when a child loses their parents, the word for it is orphan. But there is no word in any language for a parent who's lost a child. It's, they can't make that word up because it's too horrible to consider. And so, so for, your, for your intense loss, we, we don't understand, but we love you and, and hurt with you. It, 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 it's, it's, it's almost a, unspeakable old man did he love his mama he took her own ride alongs who does that <laughs> had once come you had one coming up didn't you you know why he did it. he wanted his mama to be proud of him and boy was she proud of him and to the kids okay kelly your losses, unbelievable. But all the things that they're saying about your dad and all the things that your blue family said about your dad, I see that in you. I see it in, I, I see it. I have been blown away by your character and, and, and by how solid and loyal and kind the way you love that woman right there is unbelievable. You know, success always leaves a trail. It leads right back to daddy and mama. And thank you for investing in these guys. We love you. Leah, your loss is different. But my goodness gracious, how much this family loves you. They have embraced you and loved you. <laughs> 
I can see why he picked you out. I can see why he loved you. And thank you for loving him. Can I tell you guys where your dad is right now? If you wondered? The Bible's crystal clear on this, Pastor. The moment life left his body, he was escorted into the heavenly realm. From the day this, no, the moment this happened, he's not been alone. He's had an escort. You saw it this morning. It's going to be a huge escort this afternoon. He's been escorted. He's never been alone. But the escort into heaven, whoo, son. You know who's up the front of the line? And all your family that knew Jesus are standing there. Hey, Greg. And they're embracing him. But I also see all that line of fallen officers who understand. And they're cheering him in. And there's Jesus. And I know Greg wants to say something to him, but he, he can't because Jesus is smothering him with love and his attention. He's home, baby. He's home. He's home. That moment that, I, that he got there, his body was glorified. I cannot wait for that because mine's getting kind of wore out. You know what I'm saying? His body was glorified. His body is vibrant. It's young. It's whole. It's perfectly designed for what's next, and that's called eternity. In the words of my dispatcher sitting over here, they would say, 344-year status. And he would say, code four. He's good. He's good. You know, there's no fear there. There's no pain. There's no stress. There's no worries. There's no darkness. There's no loneliness. There's no unresolved relationships. There's no unmet needs. There's, there's no shadows. There can't be shadows because the whole place is lit by the glory of Jesus himself. There were no shadow for that. We would not bring him back from that if we could. And I'll be honest with you, he wouldn't come. Because he's home. Oh, we're going to miss him. Now, how do I know this? Because the Bible is crystal clear about this. And the testimony of what started down there in the grinding booth at Mastercraft and ended up on the altar of your church makes it crystal clear. For those who know Jesus, there is no death. It's just a transfer of addresses. He's just going to go somewhere else. Hey, hey, death, now who's scared of you? What happened to your stinger now? There's not one. I hope you can get some comfort from that. He's, he's good. Now, I want to say something to the Blue family. Y'all can listen. Several years ago, many years ago, my grandfather got shot. He had a 17-year-old son, my dad. And through that event, something happened. The seeds of hate and anger and fear, along with guilt and shame, were planted inside my dad from that event. And those things came together to become a grinding wheel. And it ground and ground and ground and ground away chunks of his life. Some people in here, they know what that's like. It, chunk, it ground away on relationships, ground away part of his fatherhood. He became another, a second victim. And it chewed him up. Thankfully, thank God, he was finally released from that misery. This is a long story. I don't have time to tell you, but I do want to tell you, my, my, my friends, that evil is not done. It wants more victims. 
Do you understand? Evil wants to bring to destroy more lives from this. And we have to battle this kind of evil too. Everybody with me on this? We have to battle this kind of evil. Well, I know you're looking at me and go, well, well what, what weapon do we draw for that? What kind of weapon do we deploy against evil like that, that wants to destroy more lives? Well, let me read it to you. Out of the book. It defines the weapon. Let me read it to you. Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Don't let evil conquer you. You conquer evil by, anybody know the rest of that? Doing good. It sounds counterproductive because we want to battle it and fight it and shoot it. But the, but the weapon against evil is by doing good. And you guys, those badges from where we're at, they're gleaming. Do you see them? You guys do it every day. Every single day. And I'm not talking about what's on your body camera. Most of it, nobody ever knows about it. Your boss, the sheriff never knows about it. When you pause, I see you with children. You take that extra moment because you see that admiration in their eyes. I've seen it over and over how you take that moment with kids and you rub them on the head or get on the knee and you talk to them and you spend a minute with them and you inspire them because they think you are the greatest thing in the world and you are because you're good to those kids. I've seen it. I know how tough you think you are, but you're as soft as they come. I've seen it when you go in your pocket. Chief, you know what I'm talking about. You go in your own pocket and you bring out money and you just hand it around to some people who you don't know. If you're just trying to help. I've seen you do it to help somebody. Or when you, you're going up the road and you just stop to help somebody. You don't have to do it. You did anyway. I was going to the dump the other day. And had a mattress blow off my truck. Where's York? Blue lights popping behind me. Need some help? We thumped that mattress back on there. I tied it down better this time. And I'm sure he went on and never thought another thing about it. But I did. Nobody else stopped. That's called good. That's good. That's good. My grandson, who's five years old, he thinks that, that Officer Shane Collins at the Maryville Police Department is the greatest man that lives, maybe besides me. You know why? Because Shane takes a minute with him and rubs him on the head and plays around with him a little bit. He just takes an extra minute. That's good. Or when Chase brought the bear cat to my grandson's birthday party. Bet you didn't know about that one, Sheriff. You see them little boys climbing all over it. It was unbelievable. Didn't have to do that. It took extra time to do that. I've seen you when you put your arms around somebody and at a wreck or when you hold a hand of an old person as they're loading them up into the ambulance. And I've seen you cry with victims of crime. That's doing good. That's doing good. Like coming over here from Dallas or New York or Connecticut or Chicago or Rockwood or Sweetwater or Knoxville. Those guys are in this building now. That's doing good. This goodness is behind the badge. It goes way beyond tactical or technique or shooting or handcuffs. Your goodness that you have is the greatest weapon ever deployed against evil. It's the greatest weapon ever designed. Keep fighting evil. Keep doing good. Romans 8, 28 says this. All things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So we don't understand it, but there's a plan at work here. 
Not sure where, how to figure that plan out, but I don't, I don't quite understand it. But here's how it works. When death has come and taken our loved one, it makes a home so lonely and drear. Then do we wonder why others prosper, living so wicked year after year. But here comes the hope. Farther along we'll all understand it. Farther along we'll understand why. Cheer up, my brother. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it. All by and by. All right, 344. Thank you. You set a standard for us. Thank you for showing us the way. Things will change because of you. I guarantee you that. And brother, we'll see you on the other side. It's better on the other side. In the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pastor James Willis. Come and share. Amen. I tell you what, uh, I mean, I know hearts is breaking. Amen. I can, uh, our heart is. We got the pleasure of meeting Greg, and it's already been said. Uh, Amen. We got to meet him down at the church house. Amen. And all road, uh, he got ordained as a deacon the same time I got ordained as a preacher and uh, came to fell in love with him. And he loved him, loved his family. We used to have uh, Christmas together, uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, amen. Just a joy to be around him. Amen. If you knew him, amen. You loved him. And uh, But I tell you what, uh, I told the family here the other night, there Saturday night over at their house, I, I told them, I said, uh, if you plan on being with Greg again, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. Because I tell you what, uh, what Greg done down there at Knob Road Missionary Baptist Church that uh, Sunday, whenever he went down to an altar, uh, called upon the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, asked him to come into his heart. I tell you what, it changed uh, his destination, amen, just a few minutes on the altar of God. I tell you what, that's what it's all about, uh, amen, changing, amen, our destination from hell uh, uh, into glory land, amen. And I can't do that on my own, amen. It takes the blood uh, of Jesus Christ, amen. He came to believe and to die, amen, to go to Calvary's cross. That's why our Savior came here. He came for one reason, amen. He didn't come uh, uh, for two or three different reasons. He came uh, uh, for one thing, amen, to do the will of the Father, amen, to come and uh, to pay the blood atonement, amen, for all mankind, uh, uh, that we don't have to die lost, amen, and go uh, uh, to a devil's hell, amen. But I tell you what, uh, uh, what he done on Calvary uh, uh, 2,000 some years ago, uh, uh, he made a way, brother, amen, for a whosoever that uh, we could be saved, amen, be born again and know uh, uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt whenever this thing uh, called life is over down here uh, uh, that we've got a better place, amen. Uh, some call it heaven, uh, but I tell you what, amen, if you've been saved uh, by God's grace, amen, and the blood has been applied to your heart, amen, you get to call it home, amen, and I'm glad today, amen, that I, amen, I'm born again, amen, a child of the living king, amen, child of God today, and amen, I get to call amen, heaven, my home, and amen, and I'm going to get, uh, brother, to see him again, son. Amen. I know you will. Amen. You saved, ain't you? Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. It's knowing that whenever this time comes, amen, and it's going to come. It's going to come to each and every individual. Amen. In the house today. Amen. There's only two, brother, amen, that I've ever known of that escaped death. Amen. Uh, one was Elijah and the other was Enoch. Amen. Everybody else, amen, had to go uh, by the way of the grave. Amen. Uh, well, we're going to go that way. Amen. 
amen, unless the Lord splits those eastern skies, amen, it comes and gets us, amen, as a born again believer, amen, that's what it's all about, brother, amen, it ain't about nothing else, amen, it's about, amen, getting ready uh, for this hour right here, amen, because we're going to face it one day, and who's to say, amen, I won't face it whenever I walk out them doors, amen, but if it comes to me, brother, amen, I'm ready, amen, to go, that's where the hope's at, amen, it's not in this world, it's not in the bank account, it's not what you live in, it's not what you drive, amen, but it's the blood, amen, of the Lord Jesus Christ being applied to your heart and soul, amen, that's where we've got hope at today, I tell you people today, they've got their hope, amen, in the wrong things. Uh, but I tell you what, I'm glad, amen, I can call him my brother. Uh, I tell you what, I went the same way. Amen, I went, I heard a man of God stand and preach me the word of God. Amen, and he told me, he said, amen, I heard it like this, amen, God getting lost, amen. Uh, whenever you get lost, amen, and whenever God holds you over hell, I bet he don't drop you, amen. And then, then you'll know what to do, amen. You'll have to preach your amen to stand, amen, and preach too long, amen. Whenever you get in no shape, amen, because you'll fall out of wherever you're at, amen, and come down to an altar of God, amen, and call upon him, Amen, the only one that's able to save a soul from hell. Amen, and that's Jesus Christ, amen. And whenever he went to Calvary that day, he went there. They didn't take his life. He laid her down willingly. Uh, he went to Calvary's cross for one reason, to pay a sin debt that I owed, to pay a sin debt that you owed. But you know what? We didn't have nothing to pay with. We had nothing to pay with. Uh, but he went and he paid a debt that he didn't know. He paid her brother, amen, for one reason. Uh, because back over in the beginning, amen, what Adam and Eve done over in the garden of guess over there, amen, in the garden of Eden, amen, sin came into this world. And he said, man is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Amen, I tell you what, you can look around at our world today and you can see the trouble, amen, that we're in all over this world and country today. Amen, they're calling evil good and good evil, brother. I tell you what, that's why it pays today. Amen, if you ain't right with God, amen, you need to be a getting right with God uh, because this day, brother, brother. It's a going to come, amen. Ready or not, it's calling the saved. It's calling the lost, amen. And one thing it's going to need to be there. Whenever I see the blood, he said, I'll pass over you, amen. Uh, the blood's the only thing that's going to get you through the gate. That's the only thing. Silver and gold, it'll stay here. Huh? But I tell you what, whenever the death angel, he passed through Egypt, he said, whenever he passed through, he's looking for one thing. And he said, whenever I see the blood, I'll pass over you. See, that's where the hope is. He said, preacher, I wanted you to say this, that, or the other. I tell you what, you got to say what God says to say. Man, I'll to obey God rather than man. Huh, but I tell you what, this is where it's all at. I'm going to see him again. He won't be in this body here, like you said there a minute ago, brother, one that's going to ache and hurt and Amen, you wake up in the morning and you see which muscles are hurting you the worst that day before you roll over. Uh-uh, he won't be in that one. But I tell you what, there's going to be a day coming. I don't believe we're too far from that day. He said, where the Lord himself shall ascend with a voice of an archangel. And I tell you what, he's going to shout. Amen, there's going to be a trumpet sound so loud. Amen, it's going to wake the dead. Amen. He said, but be not ignorant, brother, concerning them uh, which are asleep. Amen. All right, now he's asleep, amen, with the Lord. Amen, he's at rest with Jesus. Uh, but I tell you what, he said it ain't going to prevent them. Amen, because whenever the Lord uh, comes back to get to church, amen, uh, those that are asleep in the Lord, amen, he's going to bring back with him. They're going to go back, amen, to that body. Uh, united, amen, and come out of there, amen, a glorified body, amen, and I tell you what, whenever it's all said and done, that's when it'll pay off, amen, and to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and that's when it's all going to matter, and the world don't want to hear this, but I tell you what, it's the only thing that'll keep a man, woman, boy, or girl out of the pits of hell is the blood, it's just the blood, being good is all right. Being moral is all right, but it's not enough. Well, he gave us the law, the Ten Commandments over there. It's good to live with, but it's not good to die by. Uh-uh, he said oh, he was weak. And God sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, condemned sin in the flesh. That's why Jesus came to pay the price that we owed. 
But I tell you what, whenever he went to Calvary, amen, I tell you, I'm going to read this right here over in John chapter 2, verse 19. And he said, Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. They looked at him. They misunderstood everything that our Savior said that day. They was looking at the temple. It took them 46 years to build it over there. And they said, how in the world is he going to build it? Uh, Tear it down in three days and raise it right back up. He wasn't talking about that, that what man made. That wasn't what he was talking about at all. He was talking about a day whenever he was going to go, amen, and suffer like no man's ever suffered before. Ever licked it, the devil could throw a throw at him, brother. He took it. They took that cat of nine tails and they whipped him, ripped the flesh right off the Son of God. Amen. They plucked his beard out. They spit upon his face. They done all these things. Amen. The only thing that our Savior was guilty of was loving a sinner that we don't have to die and go to hell because of. The only thing he is guilty of. But I tell you what, whenever he went there, he laid her down. He carried his cross up Golgotha's hill that day. And he lay, it got so heavy, he fell under the load of it. And I tell you what, amen, I tell you what, sin's heavy. And I tell you, we'll fall under the load of it. But our Savior went all the way to Calvary that day. And he laid his life down. And they put a nail in this hand. They put one in this hand. They put one down there in his feet and he hung between the heavens and the earth, amen, until he died. And he was as dead as any man has ever died before. Our Savior died on Calvary that day. But I've got good news. You want to know where some hope is? Amen, right here's where our hope is. Amen, he didn't stay dead. And glory to God, he ain't going to stay gone neither. He's coming back, amen, to get us and take us home to glory, amen. Only the ones that's got the blood applied is going to make the trip though. Uh, he went for one reason. John over there, he said he wept. Whenever he looked under the heavens and he looked under the earth and they couldn't find one that was able to go and loose the seals of this book. They told him, he said, John, weep not. He said, I found one. Lord, that makes you want to shout. Uh, there's one that was able to go. And loose the seals of this book right here that we could have the everlasting gospel preached to us. That we could be born again and know beyond a shadow of a doubt. See, I don't hope I'm saved. I don't think I'm saved. I don't have to go ask my wife if I'm saved. My mom and my dad, they love me dearly. But I tell you what, they couldn't save me. They couldn't do nothing for me but as far as the salvation part of it. But I tell you what, I got introduced one Sunday morning at Knob Road Missionary Baptist Church. Brother Jerry Little, he stood and preached the word of God to me like I'm preaching here today. And little did I know, sitting two-thirds in the back of the congregation, the only reason I went to church that Sunday morning because there's a boy that I coached football asked me to go. Little did I know, though, that Sunday morning, God had a different plan for me. He came looking for me. I didn't go looking for Jesus that Sunday morning. But I tell you what, he come looking for me that Sunday morning. And I tell you what, if anybody, I tell you what, whenever the Lord goes looking for somebody, he'll find you. And he found me in a shape, amen, where everybody needs to be before they get saved. He found me lost and on my way to hell. But I've got good news for you today. My destination's changed. Amen, I tell you, I ain't going to hell. I couldn't go to hell if I wanted to. Amen, and I don't want to, amen, because I've heard, amen, about the streets of gold. Amen, walls of jasper, uh, gates of pearl. Amen, I see, amen, I've read in the word of God, amen, about God's throne, amen. If there's a rainbow, amen, above it, amen. And what I've read about, amen, he said, eyes not seen, uh, neither is ear heard, uh, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared uh, for his children, amen. So I'm glad today I'm saved. I'm glad I'm going to get to see him again. I know we hurt and I know you're going to miss him. I know you loved him. I know he loved you. But boys, I tell you what, this ain't the end. Preacher I come up under, he said this right here. He said, death is just a doorway. If you're saved, you've been born again and you know that your name's recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you know that, 
That's where it's all going to matter. That's where it's all going to pay off at, friend. I know our hearts are going to miss him. Caden, son, I know you are going to miss him. Caden, Leah, mom, I know you are going to miss him. There'll be days out in front you'll just wish you could pick up a phone and call him. Talk to him just to hear his voice again. But I tell you what, there's a better day yet to come. And the only way you're going to get there, friend, I'm telling you, is through the blood. You won't make the trip no other way. We love you and Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he laid his life down willingly. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave him freely. Knowing that what man was going to do to him. He said it'd be handed over in the hands of sinful men. That's what we are. We're just old sinners. Saved by the grace of God is all I am. I ain't no different, no better than anybody. There ain't nobody, there ain't no big eyes, little use in here. Brother said at one time, all heads is level at the foot of the cross. Huh, we're all the same in God's eyes. And the one thing he's going to look for whenever it comes to this time right here. I'm sure Greg, that day whenever he went to work, I'm sure he wasn't looking for saying, well, today's the day God's going to call me home. He wasn't looking for that. I don't know when God's going to call me home either. It could be whenever I walk out these doors back here, it could be saying, all right, son, it's your time to go. But I'm ready for it. I'm ready. If the call comes today, Job said he'll call and I'll answer. His call come here the other night. Jesus called him home. Son, I'm going to see him again. We'll meet him again. There'll be a reunion one day take place. And we'll be in a land where we'll never say goodbye again. There won't be no dying there. There won't be no crying. He said, for God himself will wipe all tears from our eyes. Down here we cry because we have sorrow. We have pain. We have these things. But there's going to be a day of coming where Jesus is going to wipe all tears from our eyes. And there will be no more crying. There ain't a tombstone one in glory land. Because there's no dying going to be there. He said old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So the best is yet to come if you're saved. If you're not saved, though, make plans to be ready. He said today's the day of salvation. Tomorrow's not promised. We don't know if tomorrow will come or not. Who in here right now under the sound of my voice could say, I'll, I'm going to see you tomorrow with 100% assurity? Is anybody, can anybody do that? Not a one of us can. But I can take you by the hand. Brother, you don't know me at all. Probably never even seen me before, have you? But I can take you by the hand right here this day today. And I can affirm and assure you that I'll be in glory one day whenever my life down here is over. Amen. I can affirm and assure you that I'll be with Jesus whenever it's over here. And right on down the line, I can take you by the hand and tell you I'll be with Jesus whenever it's over here. Huh? Can you take that one beside you right now? And can you shake their hand and you affirm and tell them? I'll be with you, Lord. Huh? Can you do that? Huh? I can go right on down the line, Roger. You say, preacher, this is a funeral. No, this is a celebration of life that our brother lived. But I can celebrate the life that he lived because I know one day after a while, I'm going to meet up with him again. But I can go right on down the line and I can tell you I'm going to be with Jesus. Not of works, he said, Billy, lest any man should boast. But it is the free gift of God. Amen. It's a free gift. And for that gift, it's offered. And it's offered for a whosoever. You can be the vilest sinner they are to ever walk the face of this earth and Jesus died for you. That you could be saved. That you could be born again. 
He told Nicodemus just as straight as any man's ever told him. He said, marvel not, Nicodemus. You must be born again. You must be born again. I had a birth in 1976 by Mary and Cecil Willis in Lutton Memorial Hospital. Don't remember nothing about it. But whenever I was 23 years old, whenever I was telling you about whenever Brother Jerry preached that message that Sunday morning, I've had a birth that I can't remember. But that birth on that Sunday morning, I tell you what, I ain't got over it because I got born again. Huh? And because of the first birth, it don't really matter that much. But that second birth is when it really matters. Because of that second birth, it's why I get to go to be with Jesus whenever it's all said and done. And that's the only way to get there is through the blood. If heaven's real, you believe heaven's real? Just as sure as I'm standing here in front of you right now, heaven's real. And if heaven's real, then there is a hell. A literal burning hell. He said the rich man died and he said in hell he lift up his eyes being in torment. And he prayed. You know what they're doing in hell right now? They're praying. What they should have done on this side of eternity, they're doing it in hell now, but they waited too late. And he said they're praying. He said he prayed that he'd send Lazarus over, that he may dip his finger in water and just touch the tongue of him for his torment and in this flame. So that's where it's at. That's where reality is. That's where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. If heaven's real, then hell is real. But hell wasn't prepared for man. It is prepared for the devil and his angels is who it's prepared for. So if you go to hell, you'll go over what I've preached to you here today. You'll go over the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary 2,000 some years ago. And you'll go over the death, the burial, and the resurrection of what Jesus done. And he done it for all of us. Don't go to hell, friend. He said, make your call and election sure. I'm trying to shut up. I am. I'll be done here in just a minute. But he said, make your call and an election sure. Greg made his call and an election sure. Was he perfect? No. Am I perfect? No. Nobody else in here is neither. But I tell you what, it was all because of what Jesus done for him on that day on the altar. He said, I'll stand at your heart's door. And he said, I'll knock. He said, if any man opens that door. See, the doorknob, whenever Jesus is knocking on your heart's door, the doorknob's on the inside. You're the one that'll have to make the decision to let him in and accept him. Preacher, I've gone too far. No, you ain't. If you'd went too far, God wouldn't be dealing with you. God wouldn't be talking to you. I'm talking to somebody. I ain't very smart, but I tell you what, I know what the Holy Spirit of God feels like. Friend, don't leave this walk of life without knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're ready. I love you. I really do. I love you, family. I know your dad loved you. He loved you. He loved you, Mom. Friends, he loved you. I know it's hard to say goodbye, but like I said, this ain't, it's just for a little while, and we'll meet him again. Take this to heart what I told you. I told you the truth. It'll be either testimony for you, or it'll be a testimony against you, one or the other. Jesus loves you, and he come here for one reason, to pay a debt that we all owed, and he paid it in full that day on Calvary. And he's seated right this second, right now, on the right hand of the Father for one reason to make intercession for you and me he loves you he banked her up to heaven that day whenever he came here just for us that we could be saved amen appreciate you appreciate the Lord we love you
Thank you, Pastor. This time I'd like to introduce uh, Sheriff Jimmy Davis of Loudoun County. He is going to uh, go through the presentation of the flags. Thank you, Chief. Sheriff, Chiefs, Blount County Sheriff's Office, and to the family, I'd give my sincerest condolences from myself, my staff at the Sheriff's Office, and the community that we serve. You are in our prayers. A couple of years ago, we lost an officer on February 3rd, Sergeant Chris Jenkins at our Sheriff's Office. We had an idea to have multiple flags given for the family so those very close to him could have a flag that they could remember him by. Uh, we've decided with the Sheriff's Office to do that again today. Also, Cade, I should have listened to that first song all the way through. You got me on that one. So the first flag we'd like to present is the flag, Greg's flag. It was placed on him at Blunt Memorial Hospital during his transportation to the Regional Forensic Center. That flag we call the agency flag and it will be donated and given to Sheriff James Lee Barong of the Blount County Sheriff's Office and presented by the Maryville Police Chief, Tony J. Crisp. On behalf of a grateful nation, grateful state, grateful community, and the men and women of the law enforcement community, it's my high honor and pleasure to present to you with the first flag that draped our fallen deputy, Greg McCown. Secondly, flag number two is Greg's flag that traveled with him from the Regional Forensic Center to Smith Funeral Home. That would be presented to his mother, or Mammy, Elizabeth Talby, presented by Blount County Sheriff's Office, Second Shift Lieutenant James Wilson.
Thirdly, is the flag that traveled with Greg from Smith Funeral Home to Sapphir Heights Baptist Church. The recipient is Greg's fiance, Leah, presented by Blount County Sheriff's Office, Second Shift Sergeant, Chris Carter. Our last flag today here will be the flag that travels with Greg last night from Sphere Heights Baptist Church back to Smith Funeral Home, presented to his son, Caden McCallum. The presenter is Blount County Sheriff's Office deputy and good friend of Greg's, Richard Mitchell. The final flag of the day is Greg's burial flag. That'll be presented at the graveside to his eldest child, Kaylee, from the Sheriff of Blount County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff James Lee Barong, at the graveside. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah. 
Wish I could see the angels' faces when they hear your sweet voice. Lastly, I'd like to introduce my boss, my friend, and my mentor, and my sheriff, James Lee Brown. I had a few things prepared. I just left them back there. I just, there's not the words that can come out of my mouth or the actions that I do up here that will ease the burden on the family. The night I was notified that I was in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Fortunately, I had a state agency that helped get myself and Chief French and others back. I'm still in a shock, still in a void. And the more I see the family, the more I cry. Can't imagine. I really, really can't. He was such an asset to the Blount County Sheriff's Office. He was an asset, East Tennessee, air community. You know, get someone that would come in at 39 or whatever, he came in, I think, 2020, started a year before that. He was reserve. He took a pay cut, a substantial pay cut, because he had a passion. He wanted to serve the community. He wanted to make a difference. And there's no doubt in my mind that he did. The stories we're here to win a, a life-saving award, 
shows his commitment and dedication and sacrifice he's willing to make to help someone else. He did it the other night. He's faced with a tragic set of circumstances that he could not control at the end. He wasn't alone out there that night. We had a deputy in the audience that was with him. You hadn't heard a lot about her. You've heard me talk a little bit. But she acted, her training kicked in, her professionalism kicked in, and her courage kicked in. She did whatever she could do. She did as much as she could do to get to him to render aid. She was concerned. She was shot in the leg, putting a tourniquet on herself. But you hear, she wanted to get to him. That's love. That's commitment. That's courage. And I know she's bleeding. I know she's... I don't know how the words. Deputy Eggers, I don't mean to put you on a spot. Would you stand up? Thank you. Yeah, I've got to tell me, you know, what to do most times. I'm the sheriff. They still tell me what to do, and I guess I need it. They think I do, and I greatly appreciate it. So I'm going to go off just a second, just for a couple minutes. Ship 2 is so close. They're, they're close, and they bond, and then he, I've noticed that more in the last few days than I, I really realized. But to see them together, support each other, support the family, they're here. Sergeant Carter, would you just say just a couple of minutes, please, sir, if, if, if that's not putting you on the spot, would you mind to come up here? I want to turn it over. I, I, he deserves better than me and you can do the job a lot better. Because we love Greg. I didn't have much time to prepare, so stand by. So when I found out that I was gonna speak, my stomach dropped. And the reason for that is I'm not known to be very eloquent. As a matter of fact, I'm a man of few words unlike my lieutenant. <laughs> I also don't show my emotions very well. You can ask my exes, there's several, several here tonight. But even though I don't express my emotions very well, I can tell you that I am absolutely devastated. As a supervisor, my number one job is to protect my people and give them what they need. That night I failed Greg. I wasn't there when he needed me. But Greg has always was there when someone needed him. Whether he was helping you fix your car or watch your back on a call, he was always there. Greg's death has left a huge wound on this family, 
on my agency, and on this community. It will never heal. It will scab over and we'll move on because that's what we have to do and that's what Greg would want, but it will never heal. Ma'am, Greg will be greatly missed, but I can promise you as long as I'm alive, he will never be forgotten. I love you, brother. Thank you, Sergeant. Please forgive me. I know you're a big, big man. Uh, the support we've had through this, and, and a lot of critical instances end where it started. This did not. I know the family had to go through a lot us updating them. I made you a commitment and a promise. And with a lot of help from a lot of different agencies, I fulfilled that. I did not want to step on this stage without, without him in custody. That's not going to relieve a lot, but it'll relieve with that burden. Thank you for sharing him with us. You ought to be so proud, so we are. And you're gonna feel like you're alone, but you're not. I'm talking about, there's always gonna be somebody around you. Second shift, stand up. I want you to look behind you. You're not alone. Long County Sheriff's Office employees stand up. Second shift, look behind you. You're not alone and never will be. I'm proud of. Greg, I'm proud of each and every one of you. Thank you, family, from the bottom of my heart. I love you. I'd like to have the pallbearers come up.
are joining you once again. What a beautiful ceremony for a, this fallen officer. A very moving tribute. Um, as we watch um, the conclusion of this ceremony, if you are just joining us, um, the service kicked off with opening prayer. One of the most notable moments, the national anthem, uh, was given by Shelby Eggers. As you know, she is the officer that was wounded while uh, serving and working alongside fallen deputy Greg McCowan. And to see her after suffering that injury to her leg, she was there um, to, to give that very moving start to the service. So brave. And then later in the service, just a few minutes ago, uh, she received a standing ovation. Uh, deputy Eggers, uh, according to the sheriff, did all she could uh, during that incident. As we see the casket uh, being taken out of the church, the flag draped casket uh, containing the body of fallen deputy Greg McCowan. You but saw, as I was, well, as I was saying, um, Shelby Eggers did all she could right. to help uh, McCowan after she was shot in the leg. She put a tourniquet on her wound. This is new information we learned today and then rendered aid to him, doing all she could to try to save him. And, and keep in mind, you know, she's relatively young. 22. Um, 22 years old, you know, very new in her career, um, but in that moment um, was able with some clarity to know that he needed help. Unfortunately, unfortunately, though, um, you know, it just didn't prove to work out where, you know, he would live. Yes, but listen out. We're watching right now uh, as they the, load his casket the into you, the hearse. Uh, remain in here for a short period until we get the families and the BCSO. Okay, they were just giving some instruction to the crowd. But yes, one of the most moving moments was, yes, that, that standing ovation that she received at the hands of the sheriff, Sheriff uh, uh, James Barong. And he got really choked up speaking about this, um, this situation. He really did. And he has been emotional throughout this entire process over the past, well, close to a week now. This happened last Thursday. You see the flag draped casket being loaded into the hearse. That flag will be Deputy McCowan's funeral flag. It will be presented to his eldest child, his daughter Kaylee, at the graveside service. And I want to tell you about the other flags. And this uh, this presentation was so moving during the funeral. Um, this was led by Loudoun County Sheriff Jimmy Davis. And this is something that they did. They started uh, with the presentation of several flags uh, when Sergeant Chris Jenkins was killed back in 2022. So his uh, the deputy's mother is receiving a flag. The sheriff received a flag um, that traveled with the deputy from different points from the forensic center to uh, the uh, Smith uh, funeral home, to the church, and then back. And now finally, as we said, this final flag goes to his daughter. Uh, one flag was presented to his son, and uh, his fiance received one as well. One of the most moving uh, portions of this service, uh, and I think it really stands out if you watch the entire service, would be um, the, the Blount County Sheriff's Office chaplain. Uh, he gave such a moving tribute, Roger Murphy. And I think one point that really stood out is where he talked about when you have situations like this, um, you know, it is a death that no one saw coming. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like he was sick. He was shot right. in the line of duty. And he talked about how one of the biggest tragedies when something like this happens, mm -hmm. and he spoke from experience from his family, is that sometimes hate can be born out of situations like this yes. and that becomes the second tragedy and he just talked about not letting hate fester and to conquer hate with doing good. Yes and he talked about the specific Bible passage on that Romans 12 21 don't let evil conquer you the weapon against evil is by doing good very powerful and he broke into song a beautiful voice right, right. and he just had such a wonderful tone and paid such respect and honor to this fallen officer and yet had a message for everyone as well. Mm -hmm. and, and most of us don't know uh, or didn't know Deputy McCowan but keep in mind you know we got a little glimpse into what he was like outside of work. Um, his friends speaking about him apparently uh, them calling him Little G that yes. was like their nickname and Big G spoke which was his friend uh, 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 Greg Willis and they just kind of of humanized and talked about what he was like outside of work and what he liked to do. I love what uh, one of his other friends, Billy Radford, said. He also talked about Little G, and he said his uh, Little G starter kit. Yes. And this made him so relevant to all of us. He, it was a pair of slides, 
cargo shorts and a muscle shirt and a white ba a baseball cap. And he said, then you're ready to go. That's you're the ready little to go. starter pack. Oh. Um, but just such a, a moving tribute. Um, and to know that, you know, his two adult children were there, his, it just, th this is a tough time for that community. You could feel that emotion. Um, also saw uh, TBI director uh, Roush. David Roush. Well. David Roush. Former, uh, former police KPD. chief, yes. Not police chief. And he also, he and, and Sheriff Barong share something in common, and that is they are not afraid to let their emotions show. We have certainly seen David Roush shed tears over losses uh, right. over the years. And uh, this is such a, a sad, sad time. Um, but what a tribute for someone who gave their life protecting and serving our country, our community. And so, really, yes, our country as well. So you're looking outside right now as um, everyone is coming out of the church. Here's what's going to happen over the next few moments. Uh, the service has concluded. This is Severe Heights Baptist Church on Maloney Road in South Knoxville. Mm -hmm. From there, we'll have the procession. They will go to Grandview Cemetery on Tuckaleechee Pike in Maryville. It's a 14-mile journey on Alcoa Highway. Keep in mind, if you are getting ready to leave your home anytime soon, and the way you go may be on Alcoa Highway, mm -hmm. there are already police cruisers, there are already police cruisers lining Alcoa Highway where they will stop traffic and give time for this procession and all of these vehicles, because there's, remember, it's going to be a long line of police cruisers from all different communities uh, that will be making their way to the cemetery. They have been stationed there ready for this to happen. We want to go ahead because we have crews all along the route for this procession and at the cemetery as well. Our Dominic uh, Webster is along the route. Dominic, tell us what is going to happen there momentarily. Yeah, Lori and Tier. So uh, I'm stationed just off the side of Alcoa Highway southbound where they'll come here in the next 20 minutes we're expecting. But you can see behind me, Rural Metro has their ladder extended. They've got a flag hanging over. And on the other side of our camera, Seymour Fire Department also has a flag extended out on their ladder. And on beyond them, there are about a half dozen vehicles with people standing out beside them waiting to pay their respects as the procession rolls through the area. There are even some on the other side of the rural metro truck as well. I was able to speak with one lady and she told me how important it is. She was here with her kids. She told me how important it is for her to be out here with her kids and, and show them that it's important, you know, to show that respect for our men in blue, really all of our law enforcement agencies. And she also told me as she was making her way down here before she pulled over that the overpass at Maloney Road and Alcoa Highway is packed with people and she didn't know if she was going to be able to have time to circle back around to be able to get there and pay her respects. But like I said, she's here with her kids. They've got their American flags. I believe they're they're right behind me, actually off my left shoulder in front of the rural metro trucks. Um, they are ready to pay their respects. They've got their American flags with them. Uh, as well as Rural Metro with their big flag hanging over the ladder. And uh, it's at, at this point, it's, it's a waiting game for them to get here, to be able to watch them come through and, and see all of the, the agencies that are with, um, that are here showing their support for not only the Blount County Sheriff's Office, but Deputy Greg McCallan's family. Uh, for now, though, I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, thank you so much, Dominic. Yes, everyone is standing by getting ready to pay their respects to that fallen deputy as he makes his way along Alcoa Highway. Now we want to send things over to the church, back to Severe Heights Church, where our Molly O'Brien has been really for the past several days covering the memorial, covering visitation, and now today's funeral. Uh, Molly, where are we right now in terms of the procession beginning? Yeah, Lori, so we've been told it's going to be about 30 to 45 minutes after the funeral service ended to start the procession just because of how many law enforcement agencies showed up here to give people some time to get to their cars and then um, start that procession. So we're still about 20 to 30 minutes out from that. I do want to talk about the funeral, though. Um, I heard you guys at the talk, top of the show talk about uh, Blount County Sheriff James Lee Barong and, and his emotions in that, but something that was very touching and got our eyes, it wasn't on the program, was Deputy Shelby Eggers sang the national anthem to start the funeral service. Of course, we know Deputy she Shelby Eggers was the other deputy that was shot Thursday night. She was then treated at a local area hospital that night and then later released, but it really got our attention. 
Um, and, and he had two friends talk, one of them, Greg Willis. He talked about uh, Deputy McCowan. They would call him Little G. And he just, he loved to do stuff outdoors, it sounded like. He loved to go boating. And he told a funny story about him and Deputy McCowan would like to go snake hunting. And that just pertained to running over snakes on the gravel road. So really humanized. We really got to learn who Deputy McCowan was as a person and not just um, a sheriff's deputy with the Blount County Sheriff's Office. But um, as you can see behind me, this is part of the procession process that will begin to take place. You can see law enforcement is continuing to file out of Severe Heights Baptist Church to get to their car to then organize that procession that will take place to go to Grandview Cemetery. But I'll send it back to you guys. Molly, thank you so much. So 20 to 30 minutes. Right. And we are going to stay live with this as we cover this um, from start to finish at the graveside service at Grandview Cemetery. Let's take you back uh, to some of the key moments in that touching, touching service for this fallen deputy. It all started with uh, Blount County Chief Deputy Jeff French. That's and right. he, he just started by saying, you know what, we're here to honor his duty and sacrifice and to honor a life well lived. And what a blessing it is to be able to say that about That's right. someone. That's right. Um, also, uh, the, the different songs uh, that were given at the, the ceremony, a tribute to his life, uh, that first ballot just talked about the line of service, the, the being a police officer and what it's like to be uh, a part of that family. Um, also, we talked about Shelby Eggers giving the national anthem, so some beautiful tributes throughout that service. Also uh, touched a lot on his faith, uh, apparently talking about his transition as a person um, and, and finding his faith and, and where that plays an important role in his life. And so there were some beautiful words said about that as well. There really were. Governor Bill Lee spoke as well, and we saw a, a representation from our state leaders. Lieutenant Governor McNally was there, Speaker Cameron Sexton, and other members of the General Assembly all came out. Uh, but really, it was just so moving to hear from his friends. And as we have been talking about, really feeling like we got to know a little bit more about who this man was. And he was a good guy. Yeah. He was a good guy. We want to send things over now to Ella Wales, who's also at Severe Heights Church. Okay, Ella, get us up to speed on what's going on surrounding you. Yes, you guys just explained what happened inside throughout the entire service, but there's also a lot to be seen outside the church. One of the most incredible things to see in person here today is just the turnout for the funeral. I mean, there were deputies not only from neighboring counties like Loudoun, Green, Cock County, but all the way from Bradley County, Sullivan County. I even saw Berry Hill City Police here, which is just outside Nashville. So seeing the turnout today has been one of the craziest things to see. And They've gotten some help from a few other groups around the state, a few motorcycle groups. They've been out here helping direct traffic as all of those people have come in. And as we've learned throughout this week, Deputy McCowan, motorcycles, riding motorcycles was one of his hobbies. So that just kind of shows how every group in his life has come out today to help. There's still a few people filing out. Um, it's been going on for a while now as there were so many people inside as we saw. But everyone out here is kind of working together to get everyone out safely, um, get everyone in safely. It was going very smoothly. And though it has been a somber morning. I would say that a lot of this feels like a celebration of Deputy McCowan's life and all that he sacrificed and did throughout his career. We're going to come back later, but for now, we're going to see that all of these sheriff's deputies, police officers, even some people from the training academy were here. We're going to make sure they get out safely for the procession and check back in with the, on that procession a little bit later. Guys. All right. Ella, thank you so much. And speaking of the procession, I know we've been taking you through what to expect, what's going to happen mm -hmm. if you're just now joining us um, after this funeral, uh, the procession will go from the church to Grandview Cemetery on Tuckaleechee Pike in Maryville. The procession will take Alcoa Highway southbound to Hall Road in Blunt County and then to Tuckaleechee Pike ending at the cemetery. There will be a graveside service. There will be full police honors. 
One of, one of the fascinating things about the service, you know, Lori, when, when you had the two friends who were speaking yeah. uh, about Deputy McCowan, it was interesting they both were from his um, previous life working at, at, at the boating company. Yes. And one of the things that I thought was just really interesting was, and this was uh, Greg, or Big G, as he referenced himself, <laughs> uh, and he talked about just the type of man that Deputy McCowan was, or at that moment, he was Greg McCowan, just, you know, his co-worker, and about how when he was deployed, when uh, when uh, Greg Willis was deployed, that Deputy McCowan stepped in a lot to help out with his family, checked on his wife and kids, um, basically saying, you know, if you, what do you need? Okay, I'm going yeah. over there. You need to put mulch down? I'm going over there. And he really felt that sense of brotherhood mm -hmm. from him. True friend. And his friend, Billy Radford, who also worked with him at uh, Mastercraft, they, right. they worked on building boats for a long time. And Radford said that McCowan had wanted to be a police officer and had talked about it for years and years. He said uh, he was finally doing what he loved. He died doing what he loved. But he said beyond that, he always had a smile or a joke. He never met a stranger. And he loved his granddaughter, baby Ella. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, um, from the different departments that we heard, the representatives of those departments that we heard from during the ceremony, um, it's interesting how they're all woven together um, due to a sense of grief. I mean, mm -hmm. over the last, what, year and a half since 2022, mm -hmm. we've had quite a few of these services. So if you think yeah. about it, you had um, uh, Sheriff Jimmy Davis with the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office mm -hmm. who was presenting those flags that you detailed earlier. Sergeant Chris Jenkins. Chris Jenkins, who died. If you, if you weren't here in East Tennessee, he died while trying to retrieve a ladder out of the roadway on I-75 and was hit and killed. And so they had to grieve through that process. His son also uh, a member of that department as well. He stepped into his father's shoes, right. became a canine officer, just right. like his dad. Maribel City Police with Officer Kenny Motes, yes. who was killed during a domestic situation. Mm -hmm. So they all have kind of leaned on each other through this grieving right. process. Tucker Blakely. Tucker Blakely, that's, that's right. One. That's right. So, yes, Lost County we, Sheriff's Office. we have had too many of these and at least to four watch since them, 2022. Yes, to watch these law enforcement family members, because it is a family, brothers and sisters in blue, come together like this. You've, you've never seen anything like it. Right. That support, that community, that love, and that family. Uh, they talk about blood and blue. It's the same. They also talked a lot about that evening shift, mm -hmm. um, being so close, uh, so tight knit, mm -hmm. and how hard they were all taking it, but yet leaning yeah. on each other. So, um, you know, it's been very um, difficult to watch uh, mm -hmm. all that has transpired over the last few days, the highs and lows of it all. Right. There, just as a spectator, as someone reporting on this, right. it, we're all human, and there are moments that take your breath away, uh, whether it's that line of blue cars going down the roadway, getting ready for the service, to just hearing these law enforcement leaders um, break down and, and talk about their thoughts and describe this deputy in such human terms. You know, uh, you take the uniform off, you've got a real guy, you know, a, a father wanting to yeah. be married, uh, a, a dad, a grandfather, a friend. Mm -hmm. And again, we can't stress this enough, for someone to say, you have had a life well lived, that's what it's all about. Well, we thank you so much for being here with us. Yeah. We're trying to wait now. They're starting to get that, uh, that funeral procession. They're mm -hmm. trying to get the funeral procession underway. And that will start in the next about 10 minutes from now. So right. we're standing by for that uh, to happen. But we are, we have crews fanned out throughout the area. We do. And our reporter, Naomi Hilmer, is it really one of the hubs uh, of the investigation and the legal process? And that, of course, is the Blunt County Justice Center. Naomi, tell us what's happening there right now. It's very close to where everything has been going on. Absolutely, Lori. Here at the Blunt County Justice Center, we have a lot of people lining up waiting for this procession. This is where they have his cruiser out front with all of the flowers on it. And that is just part of the community that has shown how much they care about Deputy McGowan and coming out and showing their support for him. As you can see, there's a lot of people here waiting for the procession. They've been slowly starting to trickle out and now it is almost completely full. And as you can tell, a lot of people 
who I've spoken to, some of his friends and some people in the community have also said that they've always thought he was such a good person, even when he wasn't in the badge. He was just a good person all around. And I think the people that are out here right now is a testament to that, how many people are coming out to support. as the community was out putting flowers on his cruiser. Um, Naomi, can you talk a little bit about what that was like uh, in terms of some of the messages you were getting from people who were paying tribute and also forming that prayer circle this weekend? Absolutely. There was a lot of people who were giving, putting flowers, putting notes on his cruiser. And a lot of the people who were out there, some of them didn't even know him, but they knew that he was a part of this community. A lot of people said that even before this, they have been supporting the Blount County Sheriff's Office since day one. So something like this has been, has become such a big shock to them. Um, but they've been bringing out their children and very many people have just been speaking about how much this has hurt them and how shocking this whole situation has been and how they want to show their support to the sheriff's office and to the people who are out trying to find his killer. All right. Thank you so much again. That's Naomi Hilmer standing by there at the Blount County Justice Center. Yes. And this reminds me, uh, it was a couple of days ago when that memorial and his cruiser, it was all coming together and the flowers kept being added and the balloons and the handwritten messages and I was out here covering this live, and I looked up in the monitor at our camera, and there was a little boy, about eight years old, wearing a police uniform. Oh. And I don't know if we captured his picture, but uh, it was a precious moment to see him just standing there taking it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. All kinds of people, all ages, as Naomi said, have been taking time to visit that because that's a tangible right. um, part of his service. Right. And you can't, for most of us, we can't do anything. You know, we're never going to do the things that they do to get out right. there and help protect the community. Right. But some way to say, I see you. Thank you for what you did. Yeah. And thank you for your sacrifice. Let's go ahead and send things back to Molly O'Brien over at the church. Molly, uh, how are things progressing over there as far as the procession goes? Yeah, Lori, people are still filing out and getting to their cards. Now, to the left of me, um, there are several cruisers as well as I know when I spoke to you guys at 1230, I talked about about 30 motorcycles coming in. We know Deputy McCowan enjoyed riding, riding motorcycles, um, and so they are also part of this procession about 150 feet from me. But I, I want to talk a little bit more about the uh, funeral service. You guys talked about Sheriff Barong not being short to show his emotion and rightfully so this is incredibly emotional for his uh, sheriff's office as well as family and friends but a really touchy moment in the funeral service was when he had that second shift they were a couple rows back um, from where he was standing stand up and he had them look behind them and no one was standing and then he asked everyone from Blount County Sheriff's Office to stand up and his message there was, you're not alone. We have each other. And he, uh, he wrote a speech. He mentioned this at the beginning of his speech. And he left his papers out of his chair. And he said, I'm just kind of going to talk. I think um, the papers, it was too structured. I'm kind of going to just talk from my heart. And he did an incredible job when he was speaking. Um, several applause, Deputy Eggers. People were standing up for her as well. Um, but really just emotional. But like I said, law enforcement still filing out of this church. Um, but I can hear the helicopter up above. The procession should kick off in just about a few minutes from now. I'll send it back to you guys. All right, Molly, thank you so much. And we will be checking back in with her as that procession begins. In the meantime, as we've been reporting, flags are at half staff at the state capitol in honor of the fallen deputy. And also he's being remembered by our Congressman Tim Burchett, uh, in the nation's capital. Let's listen to him. McCowan was known for being a loving man and a brave officer. His family was the light of his life, Mr. Speaker, and he loved them dearly. His fellow deputies knew that they could count on Deputy McCowan when he was serving alongside them. One of his colleagues described him as one of those guys you always wanted on your side. Congressman Burchett also praising in his floor speech the efforts 
of Blunt County Sheriff James Barong and the other law enforcement officers, uh, especially U.S. Marshals Service, who helped catch the suspect, Kenneth DeHart. And keep in mind, you know, he's not the only one that has been paying um, tribute or paying uh, his respects to Deputy McCowan. Keep in mind for the funeral, Governor Bill Lee and First Lady Maria were there. Randy McNally, our Lieutenant Governor, was also there. And Cameron Sexton, Speaker of the House, also in attendance. Uh, you have the TBI Director, uh, David Rausch, also in attendance. So a lot of state figures coming into the East Tennessee area to pay tribute to Greg McCowan. Severe Heights is a big, big church, and it was absolutely packed. Was. Uh, let's sing, send things over to Ella Wales at the church. We understand the procession is about to get underway. They're coming to us. So it looks like the procession is just beginning behind us. Lots of vehicles going out, just like we saw this morning when they came in. We've got lots of police vehicles, a few unmarked ones as well, and these are going to go all the way down Alcoa Highway. They're exiting right under that giant American flag, which is honestly incredible to see here in person on the crane and very fitting for Deputy McCowan and to move him back over into Blunt County. So far, it looks like it's just some Blunt County Sheriff's deputies in line up there, but there's definitely going to be a few more um, different agencies coming after. I can see it over here a little bit lined up and they're all waiting. They've got their lights on too, so that'll definitely be a sight to see down Alcoa Highway as they go further. Looks like they're kind of rounding the ramp up there to get onto the highway and over even on the other side of the highway where they're not driving, all of the cars over there are kind of pulling over over stopping to show their respect and watch as they all go by. All right, and it looks you. like the hearse is now pulling out as well. We're going to stay with this uh, so we can see there there is the hearse rounding the corner starting the procession on the way to Grandview Cemetery. And as you can see, that hearse is flanked by those uh, motorcycle officers uh, that are taking him down Alcoa Highway. Um, you know, this will be led by the Blunt County Sheriff's Office. You'll see a lot of their cruisers uh, behind the family in, in, the, in the vehicles right behind the hearse. And then from there, you will get all of those supporting agencies from the area that will take to Alcoa Highway uh, as well as they make their way to the cemetery for those full police honors that will be bestowed upon fallen Deputy Greg McCowan. This is a 14-mile trek. Um, the procession goes from the church that you just saw to the cemetery, which is, again, in Maryville on Tuckalichi Pike. They're going southbound on Alcoa Highway uh, to Hall Road, which is right past the airport in Blunt County, and then uh, onto the cemetery. We have crews all along the way. What a thing to see, though. If you are out oh. in the community and you just happen to be by Alcoa Highway, you purposely make your way to, to give those final respects. Um, what a sight to see what a as sight they make to their see. way to the cemetery. Yes, and uh, we've been told that so many people are standing and saluting right. or they have a hand over their heart. Well, of course, when you see that. Again, mm -hmm. it's one of those uh, breathtaking moments. All right, at this time, we do want to check in right now. I believe Dominic Webster, mm -hmm. uh, our reporter, is standing by on Alcoa Highway. We want to check in with him uh, to just see how things are progressing from there. Dominic, have they closed down Alcoa Highway yet? I know they alerted us that they would be doing that. Yeah, Tiersa and Lori, right now it does look like Alcoa Highway, southbound anyways, has been closed uh, as the procession gets underway. There have been several more people showing up, pulling over on the side of the road so that they are able to pay their respects for Deputy McCowan as he, as the hearse carrying his body will, will be passing by here any minute now. Um, Roll Metro is still behind me. They've got uh, uh, their people over there. A tow truck driver is standing by their side. He's there with uh, his wife and his family. Um, and then the, the woman and her kids that I spoke with earlier today, they are there getting ready for the procession to come by. I, I don't know how well you can see, but off in the distance, the interchange of Alcoa Highway southbound and James, um, excuse me, Governor John Sevier Highway. There are cars lining up uh, because they are stopped 
and then more people showing up on the other side of the Seymour Fire Department truck. Uh, for now, though, I will send it back to you guys in the studio as the procession continues to make its way down Alcoa right. Highway. Thank you, Dominic. We'll come right back to you as that procession uh, passes by you. But in the meantime, let's go back to Ella Wales at the church for more information on what's happening there. Yeah, from here we can see kind of all the other agencies lining up in the parking lot to join the end of that procession. Procession, excuse me. Behind here we've got Alcoa Highway where we can see it beginning. Um, the hearse is actually driving by right now, accompanied by a few of the motorcycles. If we want to zoom into that a little bit. But as you can see here in the parking lot, we've got all these other agencies, lights on, ready to go and join the, the procession. We've got the University of Tennessee police, even airport police from the Knoxville airport are here. Like I mentioned earlier, we've also got Greene County, Bradley County, Sullivan County, places that are a few good hours away. I also saw Murfreesboro Police earlier and Berry Hill City Police as well. This procession is definitely going to be a sight to see along Alcoa Highway as Dominic described, especially for anybody who just happens to be driving by. You can also tell by looking from over here that the cars on the other side of the highway are fully stopped uh, just to kind of watch it go by and pay their respects. Um, we've got some right here and a little further down where you can't see there's a whole line of cars just waiting in front of that exit where they're coming off from the church. So this is definitely a sight to see out here, especially with the lights on in the parking lot. And we've also got a helicopter up ahead. So anybody in the nearby area would know that we've got a lot going on here and can just see how much support is here for Deputy McCowan. Well, we'll check back in once the procession is finishing up leaving here. All right, thank you so much, Ellen. Yes, it will be a slow procession as they mm -hmm. make their way down Alcoa Highway. And you see all those supporting agencies oh. that she talked about. You know, the Knoxville Police Department just now tweeting out, mm -hmm. uh, talking about Deputy McCowan. Mm -hmm. May his service and sacrifice never be forgotten and his family, friends, and loved ones find peace and comfort in the days ahead. And they've oh. been one of those supporting agencies. Absolutely. And, you know, even a few days ago, as I was driving to work, I saw cruisers from Bradley County, right. Sullivan County, as Ella mentioned. And I thought, oh, my goodness, they're already here. They're right. already here. Such an outpouring of support on a nationwide level as well, because this made national news. Oh, that's we right. had networks calling us, wanting the information uh, on what happened to uh, Deputy McCowan and, and the manhunt and what was going on with that. And as Sheriff Barong had said early on, his goal was to find and arrest the suspect before today, before the funeral, so that family and the law enforcement community could focus on paying their respects to the deputy as, as an important part of the grieving process. And, and it felt like there was some closure um, yeah. today in terms of the way they were able to mourn because mm -hmm. their focus wasn't divided. You know, it was solely on remembering him, right. his life and his legacy, and then going from there. You know, you talked about one of the tributes, which was the flags, and I just thought that was such a, um, mm. a humanizing way because we do focus a lot, and I say we, but the community, on the fact that he was a police officer, but the mm -hmm. fact that the majority of the people who received those flags of tribute mm -hmm. uh, were his family members. The first one went to Sheriff Barong, but after that, his mother, his fiance, mm -hmm. his two children. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just goes to show you, you know, your life is bigger than your job. You, there are people yes. outside of that that love you. Um, and for them to be recognized and honored with that tribute, um, it, it's, it's fitting. And the thought that went into this, and it was born out of what happened for Sergeant Chris Jenkins in 2022, the different flags that traveled with the deputy's body from the various points. Right. Um, each one saved, preserved, and given to different family members. Um, the flag, for example, uh, the agency flag, as it was called, that's the first flag that accompanied Deputy McCowan uh, right after his death was pre presented to Sheriff Barong. And then the one that went with the deputy from the Forensic Center to Smith Funeral Home was presented to McCowan's mother, Elizabeth Talby, mm -hmm. and on and on. The flag that traveled from the funeral home to the church was presented to his fiance, Leah, and then to his children. And, and the final one that is traveling with him right now will be presented graveside to his daughter, Kaylee. All right, at this time, we do want to send things back over to Dominic, who is standing by alongside Alcoa Highway as that procession makes its way southward. Uh, and Don Dominic, just get us up to speed. It looks like you have some activity behind you now. Yeah, Tirsa and Lori, the, 
the first round of officers and other law enforcement agents making their way down Alcoa Highway are passing me. We are waiting to see the the transport with the hearse come by, but right now the, the first rounds of, of the police escort for this procession are making their way through. Looks like it is uh, KPD uh, making leading the charge here on the on their motorcycles, uh, waving at the kids on the side of the road. You've got um, rural metro off to off to the side here, um, you know, paying their respects. There, there's a gentleman over by the Seymour Fire Department truck, hand over his heart, as you all were mentioning earlier. Um, you know, just paying their respects and seeing this type of presence and and really, um, you know, outpouring of support for this deputy is, is something to behold. The Maryville Police Department and their motorcycles, uh, along with uh, the UTPD and some uh, Tennessee State Troopers making their way by now. And it looks like the the hearse is making its way up this, uh, this shallow hill coming up here on Alcoa southbound. Uh, just, just a lot of of police presence right now um, as you as you can see and people all the way up even on the northbound side side of Alcoa Highway people are pulling over walking across the lanes of traffic to make sure that they can get a vantage point of this um, as all of these cruisers and motorcycles and, and law enforcement agencies from not just East Tennessee but around the state uh, are making their way down down the road so that they can get to Greenview Cemetery here uh, just 13 miles down the street from where we are now it's a very slow process getting down there as you can see um, not moving very fast but that's okay they they're wanting people to take their time and and paying their respects and, and people in these vehicles now are, are still you know waving out at the at the children that are right here on the side of the highway there there are even more people way further up the road from where we are paying their respects um, you know right now this section of Alcoa Highway is under under construction so there's a big swath of open asphalt for people to uh, pull over and get out of their car and and stand next to one another and pay their respects to Deputy McCowan and um, you know lift up his family and the Blunt County Sheriff's Office. You see uh, cruisers with the Blunt County Sheriff's Office walking or driving by. Now there's a there's a helicopter overhead. I'm not sure which agency that is from, but they are coming underneath the Rural Metro fire truck and their flag and the Seymour Fire Department flag. They've been set up here since just about 1.30. And I was talking to Jeff Bagwell of Rural Metro earlier, and he I asked him a question. I said, you know, you guys don't do the same job, but you're all first responders. And, and what does it mean to see this type of, of outpouring of support for one of your brothers. They, they are all first responders. They have that brotherhood. And he said, it's incredible to see. It's even more incredible to be a part of that family and the East Tennessee family as well. The hearse um, coming up the hill now, you can see it's surrounded by, by motorcycles. We've still got Blount County Sheriff's Office vehicles making their way uh, through here. Um, but here comes the motorcade uh, with the hearse and the body of Deputy Greg McCowan, his family um, in the in the vans behind him. Uh, as as that hearse passes by our camera here, I, I'm gonna go silent for a little bit as just a, a moment of silence to pay my respects. Now, as you can see, the, the hearse has passed by. They've still got about 13 miles left in this procession to get to the cemetery where Greg, Deputy Greg McCowan will be laid to rest. There's still a long line of law enforcement vehicles, more, even more Blount County Sheriff's Office cruisers making their way past us now. He just passed under the Seymour Fire Department ladder, uh, making his way around the curve just ahead of us. Uh, but for now, guys, I will send it back to you in the studio. 
All right, thank Dominic, you, Dominic, thank you wow. so much. My goodness, what a moving yeah. moment. And we wanted just to let you feel as though you're there if you're watching right now and just soak in that moment and pay your respects That's right. uh, as the deputy and the hearse pass by. Uh, we want to go back to where the funeral service was held at Severe Heights Church and Molly O'Brien. Molly? Yeah, hey, Lori, I understand the hearse just went by Dominic. He's a couple miles up the road from us. We're here at Severe Heights Baptist Church. And we always hear about the band of brothers, the band of the men and women in blue. And there is no question about it. When you see the sea of blue behind me, agencies from all across Tennessee, we've seen Greene County. Here's Livingston Police Department right in front of us. Knox County Schools I see to the right of us. Wildlife Resources, KPD, Knox County Sheriff's Office, Lenore City Police Department, just to name a few. I mean, the sea of blue you're seeing, it's, it's chilling. Um, and you know Deputy Greg McCowan's family and friends and the Blount County Sheriff's Office, they're going through an unimaginable time. But to look out and see the support that they have, and I know Sheriff Barong said it when he was speaking in the funeral, that we've got you. And if that message wasn't clear in the funeral, you can see it uh, in the parking lot at Severe Heights Baptist Church and along the procession. I'll send it back to you guys. All right, thank you so much, Molly. And you know, we continue to watch that procession as it makes its way on Alcoa Highway, checking out some of the different TDOT Smartway cameras and you can pick up glimpses and pieces of that procession uh, as it makes its way. You're taking a look right now at the Alcoa Highway at Topside Road, TDOT Smartway camera. And you can just see the turnout uh, as these different agencies pay their respects uh, to their, their fallen comrade. It's quite something to watch that procession as it makes its way down Alcoa Highway. And another to see uh, the cruisers on the side of the highway that we've been talking about there to make sure everything goes smoothly uh, there to witness what is happening right now. And you're seeing some of those vehicles off to the side and you can see um, some of the people that are standing there as well. Uh, several of those vehicles are, um, you know, just people in the community that have stopped. I see some work trucks as well uh, as they stop and just salute or just have a moment of silence as all those cars make their way through to the cemetery. So touching to see uh, children as well clutching flags uh, as the procession goes by. That's where uh, Dominic is. Uh, and we were watching that earlier. It looked like a family that had just come out to pay their respects. The next camera that will pick it up as they make their way will be the Alcoa Highway at mile marker 19.2 camera. That's just south of Hillside. Um, so though you'll, you're going to see a lot yeah. of red if you look on the TDOT Smartway map right now because mm -hmm. all traffic is stopped, especially Governor John Sevier Highway. It's just going to be a little slow for right now right. until it makes its way through. They've shut down part of Alcoa Highway so that this can happen. And as we've been saying, it's a 14-mile trek. What would you say they're at? probably 10 miles out About, from yeah. the cemetery at this point. I would say 10 or 8 miles out. Um, it's going to be a slow journey. It, it has been such an emotional day just witnessing this entire uh, ceremony play out. Just remembering also the days after this. Uh, a lot of heartbreak uh, when you lose somebody that you that you love and that you respect. The family is being held up right now by this outpouring of support, but then reality sets in and you must go about your day-to-day -day tasks and that's when the grieving process and everybody goes away and they go back again. to their different departments. Yes. And, and, and yes, and also keeping in mind uh, Shelby Eggers and, and what, you know, she has seen and gone through and she is, you know, recovering from her wounds as well. I have such respect for her. I think we all do. At only 22 years old, uh, she graduated from the academy in 2020. And as we learned, we learned new information about her uh, night, in the yeah. funeral today and uh, from the sheriff, from Sheriff Barong. And he said that she did all she could to help after that violent uh, incident. Uh, after she was shot in the leg, she quickly put a tourniquet on and jumped right in to render aid to the fallen deputy. Oh my goodness. All right, we're going to watch for a little bit uh, as the procession makes its way on Alcoa Highway going south. Uh, traffic has stopped going northbound as well, uh, just out of respect for what's happening in those mm -hmm. oncoming lanes. And, and as we watch this, you know, a reminder that so many people are taking part in this. Uh, the decision was made to let schools out early for a number of reasons, 
one, so that people could attend uh, the funeral or perhaps watch the procession as it That's came right. by, take part in some way. Uh, but the elementary schools let out at around noon today. Mm -hmm. The uh, upper classes let out right at the funeral time, uh, allowing people to, well, allow traffic and the procession to go as smoothly as possible, but also, again, to take part if they wish. Because some of those families would want to go and, and pay their respects, but also so that students wouldn't be stuck on buses for an hour mm -hmm. waiting for traffic to open back up. Um, but Alcoa, Blunt, Maryville City Schools, all doing what they can to give people the opportunity, if they so choose, to pay their respects uh, to the ceremonies and, and um, what was going on today. The next stop, of course, will be Grandview Cemetery on uh, Tuckleechi Pike in Maryville and there will be a graveside service. And we've been talking about this and we really don't know. We won't know until we get there because no plans have been announced on um, police honors. He will what be buried level? with mm -hmm. full police honors. We don't know what that will entail because it can be different for every family. The family has a huge say in uh, how that is carried out. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We'll continue, of course, to continue to check back in on the procession route. We do have reporters that are spanned out throughout this entire procession route from the church down to Grandview Cemetery. You're looking at the route right here, uh, the, the procession route on your screen. And so traffic is going to be locked down until they make their way to Grandview Cemetery. Um, and that will be the final portion of those tributes. And really, I always find the graveside service to be the toughest part because you can sit through the, the ceremony, the, the funeral, and you hear all those beautiful words about the one you mm -hmm. love. Um, and, you know, there are moments of laughter and moments of um, reflection. But when you get to the burial site, it's such a moment of um, finality. It's, it's, it's the closure um, to this very traumatic incident for this community. Yes, and that is the toughest, I think, right. for families because you know this is real. This happened. Right. We're right here. And uh, mm. to see the, the flag and all that represents the life this deputy lived. Um, it's a culmination point. It right. really is. Right. Tough, tough, tough. So the community is focused right now on the uh, the funeral and saying their their last their final goodbyes. Mm -hmm. After this, we'll move over to the phase of uh, justice in this case, mm -hmm. and of course, we'll continue to walk you through that as well. In our upcoming newscast, as a matter of fact, we are going to do a full explanation of the legal process and each different charge that the suspects are, are facing. Mm -hmm. uh, there are three. There's the the main suspect, Kenneth Dehart, and then the two who are charged uh, with being an accessory after. After the fact, what they could, uh, it's his girlfriend, Carrie Matthews, his brother, Marcus DeHart, what they will face will walk you through what's going to happen next. Their court date is tomorrow, tomorrow morning, and we will be there. But today we're concentrating on the life and the loss of Deputy Greg McCowan. If we can, I believe we have a, a live look right now at the gravesite. Mm -hmm. uh, if we can show, it's it's a beautiful day in East Tennessee. The sun is shining. You see those flags waving in the air. This will be the setting for the final resting place uh, for Deputy Greg McCowan. And so it'll take a little time. It's going to be a very full place. The, the church was full, so it's going to be so full when everybody makes their way to the cemetery. Uh, but we'll be there for that, that final goodbye that the family and his work family will give him. This has been a, a lovely tribute. It continues. We have been on the air since noon mm -hmm. together covering right. this, and we want to be there every step of the way to bring this to you so that you can honor uh, this deputy and know what's going on uh, in your own fashion. All right. Our Don Dare is at the cemetery. Uh, is he ready yet? Okay. He's not ready just he yet. He is uh, going to be talking with us about what is happening there. But while he's getting set up and he is uh, looking at what's happening, we also have crews fanned out across the procession route. That's right. In fact, Naomi Hilmer, she mm -hmm. has been covering this all weekend. I was working this weekend with her. Mm -hmm. um, and so she covered a lot of the different community tributes that were yeah. going on. Let's go out live to her. Naomi, just kind of set the scene from where you are because you have a lot of people behind you right now. I sure do. There are a lot of people almost shoulder to shoulder down these streets waiting on the sidewalk for the procession to come by. You can see there's a lot of people here dressed in blue to support the sheriff's office and Deputy McCowan. We also see some people from the Blunt Memorial Cancer Center as well have come out probably after work to come see this procession. 
But a lot of the community has been showing their support all throughout the weekend, all throughout the beginning of the week, and obviously at the end of the week last week when everything initially happened. But they've all just been showing their support. They all have flags. They're all wearing a lot of blue shirts with that blue stripe on the American flag. All right, Naomi, Naomi, thank you so much. You know, we saw so many um, this weekend, you mm -hmm. know, speaking of Naomi's coverage, uh, several prayer circles uh, mm -hmm. that were formed. And these are just community grassroots things that people are trying to do to show their support. Because yeah. you kind of feel like you don't know what you can do. It's uh, frustrating a little bit. Right, yes, right. to do so. something. Absolutely. All right, that was Naomi at the uh, Justice Center where a lot has been going on. That's where all the news conferences have been held um, and, and other legal aspects of this case have been held. Now people gathering to see the procession. Uh, the procession started at the church, Severe Heights Church. We want to take you back there now. People are still there. They're still leaving. It's a huge crowd. Let's send it over to Molly O'Brien. Yeah, Lori, I know the last time I checked in with you, I showed you to the parking lot to my right just to give you guys some perspective of the amount of law enforcement here. That parking lot has since pretty much cleared out, and I want to show you now the parking lot to the left of me. Several more law enforcement agencies are continuing their trek to Gray Grand View Cemetery, part of the procession. I know that procession is now a couple miles up, but still hundreds of people still at this church to take part in that procession and you can see those different law enforcement agencies I spoke about. I talked to you guys earlier at noon. Here's McMinn County Sheriff's Office, Oak Ridge Police um, and then behind Brian, I don't know if they can see. I know I talked a little bit about his passion and his love for riding motorcycles. This was the group I was talking to you guys about during my last shot as well as the uh, 1230 30 to 40 men and women on motorcycles here to, I, I don't know if they're friends with Deputy McCowan or what, but we know that was one of the things he enjoyed to do in his free time was he enjoyed boating and he enjoyed riding motorcycles. And you can just see the tributes and the respect that people are paying to him um, as people are continuing to make their way out of Severe Heights Baptist Church, hop on Alcoa Highway and then head southbound to the cemetery. But for now, I'll send it back to you guys. All right, thank you so much, Molly. We are continuing to watch this procession route, mm -hmm. picking up some of these on the TDOT Smartway cameras as well mm -hmm. uh, as the procession makes its way. Again, like you said, Lori, it was a packed house at Severe Baptist Church. So it is going to take a while for this procession to make its way through. Uh, you're looking at Alcoa Highway at Pellissippi Parkway. Those cars have stopped at the entrance ramp onto Alcoa Highway so that the procession can make its way through that section of the roadway. So they're getting closer and closer to Grandview Cemetery, and that is where we have our Don Dare standing by waiting for that procession to make its way to the cemetery and the deputy's final resting place, Don. That's right, Lori. This will be the final resting place for Deputy Cowan. McCowan, let me take this out of my ear. There we go. I hear a lot of feedback. We're at Grandview Cemetery. We're about a mile and a half from the Blunt County Sheriff's Office. There are dozens of people lining the perimeter here at the cemetery. Uh, David's going to pan over to his right. And if you can see the blue tent, we're about 150 yards from that blue tent. That's where the full police burial ceremony will take place. Uh, the Knoxville pipes and drum is here. The Shelby County pipes and drums are here. They will be leading the musical parts of the service. And uh, it's just a, just a, the mood of a police funeral is so somber and so respectful. And the people who are here gathered around the cemetery uh, are showing all their respect. We talked earlier with Tim Chambers and his daughter, his wife Madeline and their daughter Shelby, and they have flags out in the front of their house in honor of, of the fallen officer, Deputy McCowan. Back to you, Tirsa and Lori. All right, thank you so much, Don. You know, we were talking um, mm -hmm. uh, about that procession. It's interesting to note the procession is going southbound on Alcoa Highway. Mm -hmm. That is closed off. Northbound technically 
is not closed off with the police department, mm -hmm. but multiple cars have decided to stop and they're not letting traffic flow northbound oh. um, just out of respect for what is going on. Uh, it looks like some work trucks have stopped that northbound uh, traffic flow and some other yeah. personal vehicles. Yeah, we've been keeping a close eye on that and it really is touching to see people who have stopped get out of their cars right. um, and, and stand and salute or have their hands over their hearts. Um, hat in hand, if you will, mm -hmm. watching the procession go by. It is getting closer and closer to the cemetery. And, um, you know, we have crews along the procession route. And it really is so amazing to see this huge outpouring. We can't say that enough. A lot of our reporters have been standing by and just kind of watching the progression mm -hmm. of this procession. Let's send things over back to Ella Wales, uh, who is just kind of watching as these folks are making their way over to Alcoa Highway and then to the cemetery. Ella. Yes, Tirsa, as I mentioned earlier, all of the agencies that have been participating in today's procession have been doing a great job as far as organization. As you can see, the parking lot is now empty. Just a few minutes ago, it was lit up with lights, but now there's only a few cars left in the line that Molly showed us a little bit earlier, and the parking lot is pretty much completely empty. So that just kind of shows how much went into planning this procession and they should be fully making it out of the church in a few minutes. Um, I know you mentioned some of the cars on the northbound side of Alcoa Highway stopped and I can see that from here. Everybody is stopped in place, paying their respects for Deputy McCowan as the procession comes by. Also standing here, seeing the end of the procession leave the church still leaving but seeing some of the end of it there were a few more agencies i didn't mention earlier we had hamilton county out here robertson county i saw metro nashville police all good police i even saw the nashville airport police out here and a car from knox county schools so this really is a statewide effort along with the governor being here as well there's a u.s park ranger passing now a maury county sheriff's deputy passing now and it seems like a few more cars in the back some more uh, knoxville police officers officers kind of taking up the back. I can't see the very end, but it does seem like it's coming to an end soon with those Knoxville officers at the end. Sevierville police passing now, still making their way onto Alcoa Highway where the procession is moving slowly, but definitely moving. So Dominic and Naomi should be seeing some of these cars soon. We've got TBI passing, but this has definitely been a sight to see all of these cars with their lights on, leaving the parking lot one by one. Ella, yes, touching so we're gonna for sure. Check back in when the procession. Okay, we, we will uh, check back in Finally with you. Leaves, but for now, we'll bring it back to you, Lori. All right, thank you so much. It's uh, amazing to see that empty yeah. parking lot because <laughs> after it was, it was so full, packed. it was packed mainly with blue, a sea of blue. There, uh, we have been trying to get to some of the people who've taken time to stand along the side of the road, come out, pay their respects. And we have been able uh, to talk with someone who came out uh, near the Justice Center and Naomi Hilmer has been talking with her. That's right, and it's important to hear from them because keep in mm -hmm. mind, once we do get to the cemetery, it is a private burial. Yes. The, the family has requested a private burial, so we will not be bringing you that portion live because that is, that's theirs. That is theirs. We are honoring that. Okay, I understand. Let's go ahead and send it out to Naomi. We don't have a live interview per se, but you have been able to talk to some folks. What are they saying? Absolutely, Lori. I just spoke to some community members who came out here to pay their respects. One community member was saying that she is so proud to be a part of this community and so proud of all of the businesses that have come out to show their support today and to show their support for Deputy McCowan and his whole family and the sheriff's office in general. She just said this is something that generally never has happened in Blunt County before. And so seeing all the people come and rally behind this sheriff's office has been something very moving for the people who are here. All right, All right. Naomi, thank you so much. Um, yeah, people just coming out, taking part of their day to right. stop and just take it in and think about the gravity of what has happened. You know, as we watch this, you know, keep in mind a lot of folks are trying to figure out ways to support the family, mm -hmm. um, you know, who now has to move forward mm -hmm. uh, without Greg McCowan. Um, and you're going to see a lot of different types of um, 
fundraisers mm -hmm. and efforts, many of them honorable, some may not be. And because of that, the Sheriff's Department um, has done a really good job, Blount County Sheriffs, of kind mm -hmm. of saying, here are the ones that are approved by the family. Yes. Um, if anybody's asking for monetary donations, they talk mm -hmm. about the Police Benevolent Fund being the only monetary mm -hmm. uh, collection that will be out there. And then there are two shirts that are being sold, and you can find all of that on their Facebook page. But they've really been doing a good job of trying to say, you know, hey, these are the ones we know that are approved yeah. if you do want to support this family mm -hmm. um, because the grief is past today. It, it moves on past just this. Yes, it does. And that's a really good point, Tirsa. If you all want to give, and I'm sure that's what you're thinking right now, how can I right. support this family? How can I support uh, moving forward? Check the Facebook page for the Blunt County Sheriff's Office. You'll have everything there. We don't want anybody to be ripped off or scammed, especially for something like this. Right, when well, you're trying so, to have a good heart. Exactly, right, right. exactly. And we, we do don't have want your full, money to be wasted. Full rundown on our website, wate.com as well, so keep that in mind. Um, right now, we are waiting. It's going to take them at least another 15 minutes, I would mm -hmm. say, to make their way over to the grave site. They're finally starting to file in. Don Deere told us that. Mm -hmm. um, and where we're set up at the grave site, um, what did he say, about 100 yards away or so? About 150 yards, 150 away, yards away. And we are obviously honoring the family's wishes. We will not be showing that portion of the service itself. Mm -hmm. um, but we are well away from where that is happening uh, to give that family peace and letting them grieve in private. That's right. You're looking live right now. The TDOT Smartway camera is capturing along Alcoa Highway that procession as it makes its way through. Um, I believe this is um, Alcoa Highway at... Top side, if, if I'm guessing correctly, it looks like, oh, Pellissippi, that's right, I-140, I Pellissippi Parkway, mile marker 17.7. You can see those cars. Uh, if you look at them, you can see they're not all straight. Some of them are kind of crooked, and that's because they're stopping traffic from going northbound in that area. But those cars are making their way southbound uh, to the cemetery. It's about a 14-mile trek, so it's going to take a little while before they end over at Grandview Cemetery on Tuckaleechee Pike. And that procession goes on for miles. It does. So it's going to take a while. Once the hearse gets there, then they're going to wait for the rest of the members in that procession made up of so many different law enforcement agencies, family members, friends, the community. So it's going to take some time. But again, we will be with you every step of the way. Mm -hmm. And... I can't help but go back to the funeral and think about the, the special moments there, um, especially from yeah. the deputy's friends, Billy Radford, who said, you know, he was known to family and friends as little G. And he said, we are all shored up by the love we have for him. My goodness. Uniting everyone. Also, as other friend Billy Radford, and this, this point really stuck with me, and hopefully it was comforting for those mm -hmm. who are grieving right now. Uh, Billy Radford, one of his good friends who worked with him uh, at, at his job before he became a sheriff's deputy, where mm -hmm. he said once he finally joined the church and you know gave his life over to Christ, mm -hmm. he said that he was ready to meet Jesus. That is something that he said to his friend. Um, yeah. And it was a very poignant, me poignant message that he gave yeah. in that moment hopefully giving some comfort to those who may be kind of struggling with the situation. Yeah, knowing that he's in a better place. Right, and that he was at peace with it. Yes. He's at peace with it. Yes, and we also shared this with you earlier, and this is from the chaplain, and he said... Great message. Uh, he gave oh, a great message. Because it's so easy to become so angry and bitter and full of hate when something like this happens. Mm -hmm. Of course it is. It's, it's so unfair. Uh, but he talked about Romans 12, 21, don't let evil, and I'm paraphrasing here, don't let evil conquer you. The weapon against evil is by doing good. And I think that's a message all of us can take to heart. And with any situation, yes. not, not just this for anybody who's lost right. a loved one. It was interesting because he talked about, and it was a personal message because he said, this is a story from my family. His father apparently dealt with a similar situation. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, you start to, after everything is done, the services are done, mm -hmm. and the, 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 the questions and the hate and the anger yes. fuels into a second tragedy, is the way he, I'm paraphrasing as well, the way he put it. Yeah. And to just talk that message for the whole community mm -hmm. um, to not be so focused on the hate, um, but to do good from here on out. Yes. That's the right thing to do. Let it be a springboard right. for right. better actions down the road. We want to take a moment and uh, show you who we're talking about. It's this man who made such a big impact in such a short time on our community, a Deputy Greg McCowan, who was, uh, along with Deputy Shelby Eggers, was on a traffic stop and it became tragic. That's right. He was shot and killed. She was shot and injured. The suspect captured yesterday, and there are two alleged accomplices, accessories after the fact, if you will. 
They'll be in court tomorrow to begin that legal process. Today, we are honoring this man who died in the line of duty. And we're seeing a lot of tributes pour in. You know, we spoke earlier, um, the Knoxville Police Department posting their tribute to him. Mm -hmm. Oak Ridge, just a few, seven minutes ago, posting a tribute as well, saying our hearts are still fi uh, filled with sadness about the passing of a fellow officer. We continue to lift our law enforcement families up at Blunt County Sheriff's Office as they lay Deputy McCowan to rest mm. this evening. And these are pictures from the Blunt County Sheriff's Office. They are posting these just beautiful from the memorial service, the funeral service today. Pictures of family, pictures of the man known to friends and family as Little G. Little G. Yeah. And you get a sense of, of who he is as we're looking at these uh, beautiful pictures of family and friends and him. We learned more about him and he was just a good guy who was uh, pretty casual, pretty comfortable, didn't know a stranger. Mm -hmm. He liked to joke. He liked to, you know, mess around with people. And he was most comfortable when he was not in uniform in a pair of slides, cargo shorts, a muscle shirt, a white ball cap. Mm -hmm. And they called it the Little G Starter Kit. Wait, it, there was some. There that. were definitely some moments of um, joy yes. uh, within that service. Um, a celebration of his life. Of his life, that's right. I think one of the um, most sentimental moments, though, was his friend Greg, who said, this is a day I thought would never come. And he said he thought he would have been the one to die first. Yes. Um, you know, didn't expound on that, but it's just such that moment of laying your friend to rest and, and the, the reality uh, of the situation in that moment. He really gave... Um, a very touching tribute to his friend. He really did, and, and we learned even more about what this deputy was like uh, away from his job and his duties. Uh, a decent man who would do anything for his friends. Uh, that same gentleman, Greg Willis, said when he was deployed, um, well, McCowan would come over, make sure his family was okay, make sure they had everything they needed, make sure the landscaping was okay, yeah, you know, I, whatever Greg, they I need. Greg, some mulch. And he yes. said, all right, don't, like, you don't have to ask me twice. I'll get right on over there and do it. Um, so, yes, yeah, such a beautiful tribute. Also, uh, one of his friends, Billy Rafford, talked about um, Greg McCowan was one of the first people to hold his baby when his child uh, yes. was born. Um, and that's the kind of friend that he was right there for uh, his friends. So you're uh, looking right again at some of the images associated with uh, the tribute. You see those flags waving. Um, flags are at half staff throughout the state. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, everyone paying tribute to this deputy um, during this period of mourning and of grief. You're also looking right now at the hearse as it made its way through. A lot of folks paying tribute. That vehicle that you see people touching right there, that is Deputy McCowan's vehicle, his service vehicle. People laying flowers and notes. A lot of children leaving little handwritten notes mm -hmm. and colorings on that on that vehicle as well. Touching to even see balloons, you know, anything right. that people felt led to to leave there. And as we talked about earlier, this is really a tangible um, item that was so much a part of Deputy McCowan's service. And there it is. It's become a memorial. And once again, we're mm -hmm. uh, once again another East Tennessee uh, agency having to put those bands yes. uh, uh, on their badges, which is really somber. You know, usually in your career uh, doing what we do, we don't do very many of these. You know, that you know they're going to come. It yes. comes, you know, with covering news. But we've had quite a few in, in the last four at least year, since two thousand two. Yeah. yeah, or two thousand twenty. Yeah, right. Two thousand twenty. You're right. Uh, right. Four at least, and you know that the morning bands on the badges. The flags uh, that staff. were presented that have staff, oh, and then yes. the flags that were presented at the funeral. There were several flags, and I think that was such. I had never seen that until Chris Jenkins' funeral, the sergeant who died in Loudoun County um, in in 2022. I'd never seen that done before. Well, Loudoun County, uh, the Loudoun County Sheriff saying they started that yeah. after. Uh, after that tragic, tragic situation. Kid um, they, on the middle of I-75 uh, right. when he was going to retrieve a ladder in the middle of the roadway and the driver of a truck hit and killed him. Sergeant Chris Jenkins, so continuing that yeah. uh, uh, from here on out, I, I, I have a feeling we'll see this ag again should it happen, yeah. uh, where they will give those flags to the family and to those who knew that man or woman, whoever um, is next, um, it, to give those flags to them. It's a beautiful tribute and you know, normally in, say, a funeral with military honors, one person um, is presented a flag. Right. This way, so many different people who played a pivotal role in this deputy's life 
will receive a flag. Mm -hmm. I think that's a important. memento. Yes, I do. Yes. Let's give you a live look outside. We are uh, continuing to watch um, the very serene setting there at the graveside. Uh, we are waiting on all those cars to start making their way through. You're looking live right now at the cemetery, Grandview Cemetery on Tuckaleechee Pike. Um, I believe you can see it's kind of far away. I believe you can see some of those cars start to file in in the very far distance. We, of course, are respecting the family's wishes, so we're not going to be right up close on it. Um, so in the distance, you will see uh, some of those vehicles as they make their way in. It's going to take a while. It was a packed church at Severe Baptist Church, um, and most of those folks will make their way over to the cemetery for the burial service, which is, again, a private ceremony. And what a different day. You just said a serene setting. It's a beautiful day. Um, the weather could not have been more picture perfect for a tribute such as this. And it makes me go back to Friday, the day after this happened, uh, when his body was being transported right. from the forensic center um, to the uh, funeral home, and it rained all day. Such a somber day that day. Mm -hmm. And that felt fitting as well. Mm -hmm. It was almost as though those were tears uh, coming down for this for this deputy. Mm -hmm. And so today we have the opposite as we celebrated his life and we'll say the final goodbyes coming up uh, in, in the not so distant future. Right. This uh, procession is taking a while as it should and we're letting it play out and uh, it's going to be arriving at Grandview Cemetery on Tuckaleechee Pike in Maryville. Coming up, what do you think, in the next 10 to 15 minutes? But then we have to wait for the entire procession to arrive. Okay, so watching the TDOT Smartway cameras, mm -hmm. just to kind of go off what you're saying, we are st still seeing very slow moving traffic. Mm -hmm. um, if you're on Alcoa Highway at Pellissippi Parkway, they are still filing in. TDOT now has started to put up uh, one of the markers just showing that there is congestion. So keep that in mind. They put that marker up over by McGee Tyson Airport. So it's going to be kind of slow going in that spot as the cars continue to file and make their way through. Still seeing uh, slow moving traffic right now. Uh, let's see. Alcoa Highway at top side. They are still making their way through as well. And you're going to start to see a little bit of a backup if you're on Pellissippi trying to get onto Alcoa Highway as the right now cars are not making their way off of the exit ramp onto Alcoa Highway. Right. And Hall Road, that is that exit right after the airport. So that's going to be very congested as well. And I think, is that what TDOT is marking there as one of those spots? It's. It looks like it is. Okay. Because so it'll go, it's at Cusick. Okay, it's at Cusick. The marker okay. is at Cusick. By the, right, the, right in front of the airport. For right. Those who don't know Cusick, and yeah. um, then it, they will go to Hall Road and then to Tuckaleechee Pike. So that is the, uh, the process of the procession right now. Okay. If, if we're able to, can we show the Alcoa Highway at uh, Pellissippi camera? It looks like you can still see a, a mm -hmm. good matter. I, we'll give our producer time to get that up, but you can still see that slow moving line uh, as they make their way south on Alcoa Highway. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, don't forget, they've got the officers along that route as well. Yes. So just know that you will not be going anywhere for a little Look while. At that. Look at that. Everyone, if you're just joining us, uh, you are watching the funeral procession for Deputy Greg McCallan of Blunt County who lost his life last Thursday. It's now been more than 24 hours since the suspect and a fugitive was captured and arrested. He is now in jail and will be following that legal process in the days to come. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, he will be in court along with his brother and girlfriend who are charged with being accessories after the fact. But that's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Today. Today, the focus is on the life and the legacy of mm -hmm. Deputy Greg McCowan, um, his co-workers, his um, police family, his biological family, those that loved him, his friends, yeah. paying their respects to him today. So the funeral, if you missed it, it was a beautiful service this Just morning, beautiful. wrapped up not too long ago. Yeah. And now we begin the second leg of that um, saying goodbye, which is heading to the burial site. This brave man who lost his life in the line of duty was a father, a grandfather, and he had a fiance, a Leah, who was presented one of the flags today mm -hmm. at the service. And we also want to remind everybody, Deputy Shelby Eggers, uh, 22 years old, who was with him uh, during that violent incident uh, with the suspect. She was shot, we believe, in the leg mm -hmm. and uh, was able to put a tourniquet on and then render aid with him. And we heard the uh, sheriff, James Barong, let everybody know that. 
in in the service today and she received a standing ovation. We didn't know before the service today that she was going to sing and we knew that she's a singer. Uh, she has she sang at uh, Officer Tucker Blakely's funeral and she also sang at um, an, a, a groundbreaking of sorts at M Smith and Wesson. Okay. And they're one of the ones who donated a lot of money to that reward fund. Mm -hmm. So uh, and we, we wondered if she would be on on program. We you know, did. We, we knew about her, but um, we thought, is she ready? Singing. Can she do this? Right. Right. What a but brave she, woman. she was there, and it, it was a flawless performance. She got through it. Um, but that tribute to her, in terms of that standing ovation, mm -hmm. came toward the end of the it service, um, and it was at a moment when Sheriff Barong was very choked up, and just mm -hmm. speaking about the bravery of the two, and also just her will to kind of push forward in that moment to know she had to get to her partner mm -hmm. uh, to try to help him out. So, what an honor! At 22 years old, I don't, you know, I just don't know at 22 if I. <laughs> You know, that's, the a, that's a lot to show the wherewithal to kind of get back together to try to help out the person that you're with. She only um, graduated from the academy three years ago. Well, right. now almost four years ago in 2020. And, yeah. Wow. A great officer. Wow. All right. So at this time. Okay, let's it looks like we're back. going to Tuckaleechee Pike now. Yes, closer to the cemetery. Let's take a look along Tuckaleechee Pike in Maryville. Wow, look at that turnout. My goodness. You, you can see everyone lined, lined the streets there. This is just in front of Blunt Memorial Hospital uh, as they await, as they await that procession to come through. You can see one of those police cruisers right there with the lights, and it looks like they're going to stop there uh, with the crowds that are formed. Let's take yeah, a that's, look. Yeah, that's the lead cruiser. And it won't be too terribly long before the hearse will arrive. So we're just going to stay with this, everyone, as we watch as the procession will get closer to the cemetery. You could almost hear a pin, pin drop. drop. I know. It is so quiet out there. The silence. The reverence. Right. Again, this is uh, a look at people lining the road on Tuckaleechee Pike in Maryville, very close to Blunt Memorial Hospital, waiting for the procession to come by, paying their respects to this fallen officer. Okay, so to give you some uh, clarity, uh, Lamar Alexander Parkway at Tuckaleechee Park, um, Pike, excuse me, but that area right now lined with people no matter what road, what intersection or point of the intersection you're at. Um, everyone's stopping and waiting. The lead car has already come through. Now we will wait on those accompanying vehicles, the hearse, the motorcycle officers, uh, the family in the family vehicles. And then from there, multiple agencies are lined up and following through with that procession.
While we wait for the uh, body to make its way through this intersection, uh, keep in mind, now this is in Maryville, Alcoa Highway, the procession is still going on. Checking out the TDOT Smartway cameras, uh, Alcoa Highway just south of Hillside, you are still seeing a caravan of motorcycles making their way through that area. That southbound, northbound is still stopped as people pay their respects to let them flow through. Um, and that's quite a few miles away from the scene that you're looking at right here, uh, where the beginning of the procession is about to make its way through. Uh, so we're nowhere near um, complete with this uh, procession. And you know, as we look at this and we see everything that has taken place today and continues to take place, we realize that this entire community, especially Blunt County, has come to a standstill, has shut down, if you will, uh, to allow time to pay respects to the fallen officer. Blunt County Mayor Ed Mitchell announced that all government offices were closed again today. They were closed early yesterday and today to honor and respect the services for McCowan. And um, so people would be allowed to come. They would have time to be able to come and take part in this. And I also want to share uh, from Sheriff Barong some of the things he was saying, uh, everybody talking about the fact that this deputy had a life well lived, and that is one of the top honors that anyone can bestow upon you uh, once you leave this earth, to reflect on your life and that you, you spent it well, you, you did well with the years you had. Um, we also heard yesterday from the sheriff who said, you know, his goal was to find and arrest the suspect before the deputy's funeral and that is indeed what happened. You can't understand how excited I am today to tell you at 322 today, we arrested the man that murdered my deputy. While it's emotional right now, it's a relief to the citizens of Blount County, all of East Tennessee, it's especially a relief to his family and my deputies. All right, it's been more than 24 hours now since the announcement of the arrest of Kenneth Dehart. Uh, it happened yesterday afternoon. We brought you the whole thing live uh, all afternoon into the evening yesterday. Let's hear what the sheriff had to say about that. Was I excited? Were they excited? Were they emotional? Absolutely. Hours upon hours, following lead after lead, and we knew one would be the right eventually, and it was. And there you see, that is the photo um, that so many people have been waiting on to find where he was hiding out, Kenneth Dehart. And that's what you're looking at there, his capture again in Knoxville. Uh, it was a very big scene in the East Knoxville area where he was uh, captured. Um, and it was a relatively peaceful, you know, capture. He, he surrendered, came out. Um, and then from there, he was uh, handcuffed with Deputy McCowan's handcuffs. And then the sheriff was asked, uh, what about the death penalty? This is a capital case. What are your thoughts on that? He shared them. I want the death penalty. I want to go. But it'll be his, uh, General Desmond's decision. I will speak with the family first and foremost. I will explain the entire legal process to them. And then I will make a decision uh, after taking into account my discussions with them in the not too distant future. I would say we, weeks, certainly, yes, uh, not months. You know, uh, I want to point out, because some of you have asked about this, also at the news conference, we did learn the $100,000 plus reward for information leading to DeHart's capture likely won't be going to anyone. Uh, the TBI, David Roush, the TBI director, said that they got a lot of tips, but it was cell phone technology that was the biggest help in leading them to the suspect. Wow, a yeah. lot of folks did have a question. Okay, let's go back now live. The procession is making its way through um, the heart of Maryville, the heart of the Blount County area, saying their final goodbyes as people line the streets.
All right, so we just saw that sea of, of motorcycles go by. Now we see uh, more law enforcement vehicles leading that procession. The hearse is not too far back there. Not a sound is being made. No one is moving. Um, it, it, Marable, Blount County at a standstill right now. I don't know if you can see a canine officer right there on the right side of your screen. Here's another vantage point for you uh, as we continue uh, to monitor the procession for fallen deputy Greg McCowan, that procession making its way through the Blount County area. Um, as the community says goodbye to this officer that so many people loved, you, you heard those uh, accounts and remarks there at the service. Uh, he was well respected uh, and, and definitely well loved and this will be their goodbye. And now you see uh, with Maryville College in the background, mm -hmm. like we were mentioning, the hearse is coming by. We'll continue our silence here. As we continue to watch this procession as it makes its way through the heart of Blount County, uh, they're in Maryville right now making their way to Grandview Cemetery. It's interesting, you can continue to hear that helicopter. Um, all forms of um, law enforcement there, whether patrol vehicles, motorcycle officers, uh, patrol officers, you see those helicopters, K-9 unit off to the side there to the right on your screen, paying their respects to fallen Deputy Greg McCowan. People are holding flags, but really, all you can hear is that helicopter and just the slight whirring, the whooshing, mm -hmm. you know, as the, as the cars go by, but that's it. And this is a long procession. Um, and we are still watching cars make their way on Alcoa Highway, um, mile, miles away. They're, they're still coming in. They still will be filing in throughout this area. There's another vantage point. We see Maryville College in the background there. The procession slowly making its way mm -hmm. to Grandview Cemetery, and that is where our Don Dare is standing by. Don. Well, Lori, we see right now, we see the police escort uh, 
bringing the body of Deputy McCowan. You see the motorcycles coming in. This, of course, will take a while. Um, there are dozens of people around the perimeter of Grandview Cemetery. This is a large public cemetery. We're approximately a mile, mile and a half from the Blunt County Sheriff's Department. There you see more of the motorcycle officers. In a moment, we'll be seeing the hearse. The mood here is, of course, silent, just as you have been talking about. The only thing we can hear is the wind and just a nice gentle breeze. And now we hear a helicopter that you've been talking about. Um, comes more deputies in front of us. They're proceeding down Tuckalichi Pike, which is the front of Grandview Cemetery. Motorcycle officers from all over the state are on these motorcycles. And here comes the procession right now. They've got to go down all the way down to the far end of the cemetery, which is a good quarter of a mile, half a mile, and then they will loop around and we believe it will be, well, it doesn't look like it, they're going to go in the far end of the cemetery. Let me just tell you a little bit about what's going to happen here. Um, Deputy McCowan will be given a full police burial cemetery ceremony much like a fallen members of the military receive. This police funeral will be a chance to come together in unity as we have heard throughout the day. It will be a chance to celebrate Deputy McCowan's service and his dedication to his community. The service itself will be private out of respect for the family. We will not be showing you that. But let me just give you about a little bit of the order of service that will likely happen based on the family's wishes. The service will likely follow this order. It will begin with an invocation, an introduction that serves as a statement of why everyone is gathered here in honor of Deputy McCowan person who leads the statement will present a prayer. The prayer will often will likely focus on the life of Officer McCowan. As we continue to watch the procession proceed down Tuckalichi Pike. The third step of the service is sometimes combined with the first and Several of us have been to these services before. They're very somber and they're very emotional. The person who leads the ceremony will introduce himself and greet the audience, of course. Music will follow this service. Songs will be played by the Knoxville Pipes and Drums group, as well as the Shelby County Pipes and Drums. They've come from Memphis to be here. One of the tunes that they will present is Amazing Grace, a very popular choice, and there will be a medley from what they call the Rowan Tree. Deputy McCowan's fiance will be at the grave site. Leah Lane, his two daughters, Callie and Caden, and of course, his baby granddaughter, baby Ella. His dad, Dallas, will be there and his mother Elizabeth. You can hear the helicopter, I believe, above me. Total silence. 
people lining Takalichi Pike, waving American flags, waving those flags that are blue flags in honor of police officers. And I believe you can see in the far distance the blue tent, and that's where the private service will take place. The eulogy will likely be delivered by either a member of the family or the police chief. The music will be followed by prayers. And then there will be the tradition of the 21 gun salute, the bagpipes, and then probably the most poignant part of this service will be what's called the end of watch or the last radio call. It's a poignant ending to an officer's career. And what will happen is that the dispatcher back at the Blunt County Sheriff's Office will put out a call for Officer McCowan. The dispatcher will then wait a moment and the dispatcher will put out a second call. When the officer doesn't respond, the dispatcher will announce that there has not been a response. And that's the end of the watch. It's kind of tough for us to see, but you can see the cars going around. And that service, that private service will begin soon. You can see all of the Motorcycle officers lined up in honor of their fallen comrade. <laughs> Greg loved motorcycles. And here he is with the Motorcycle Corps honoring him. Something that perhaps was said earlier about his service is that Deputy McCowan was awarded a life-saving commendation medal back in 2021 for his part in saving the life of a man who was trapped in a burning vehicle. That male driver was stuck in a, he had struck a house with his vehicle and disoriented Greg and another man pulled him out. Greg had just finished emergency medical responder school and he accepted the, he was accepted on the sheriff's crisis negotiations team. And Sheriff Barong has said that he was excited to put the negotiation certificate to use. Greg McCowan will be laid to rest today. here at Grandview Cemetery, surrounded by his friends, by his family, by his police family from all over this state. What a remarkable scene. Unfortunately, we have seen this so many times. It's never easy, never easy. The end of call will probably be in about 10 minutes. Laurie and Tirsa, back to you.
everyone for staying with us for our coverage of this important day in Blount County.